Hello, it's episode 36 of Block Magazine with Murdernitz. So I'm Neil, I'm going to do it properly. I'm Neil James, United Kingdom or United Kingdom, editor-in-chief of Block Magazine. And my uh, <laughs> co-host is Tabitha of uh, Murdernitz. How are you doing? Good morning. It's morning. <laughs> uh, it's the early evening here. Oh, <laughs> is it's, your it's, cup it's, blood splattered? I've just noticed. Yeah. Ah, uh, I like it. Sorry, go on, I interrupted Thank you. you. Oh, I said it's 10 a.m. here on the Oregon coast, and it's sunny, and my dogs are outside, and my kids are home. So if you hear things, we're fine. <laughs> and, oh, it's Good Friday, isn't it? So <laughs> it means, is. means nothing to me, being a heathen atheist, but what does that mean to you? Um, um, extra, more church services. It's Easter on Sunday. Yesterday, we had our Monday, Thursday service, and we watched the altar being stripped. We had communion, and then today's Good Friday, so we'll go to church tonight, and we'll read over the Passion, and then Holy Saturday, which is where the church is silent, and then Sunday is Easter Sunday, where we celebrate Christ being risen. And does the, because you're Lutheran, does your church, I mean, I don't know, do you, does your church have statues like the Catholic Church does, or did you get rid of all of those? So, well, it depends, like, it depends on the church and, like, the people in it. Like, my, a lot of people in my new church are, like, that's too Catholic. But, like, my old church, we would have that. Because in the Catholic church, you know, <laughs> cats jumping around, um, <laughs> they cover all the statues up. I don't know when they do it, but I know they're covered until we, um, Sunday, I think. In my old church, we would cover the cross. But it was right. a really small church, and so it was real easy to get to. But the church that we're in now, you can't reach the cross. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. It's but my old church, That's like, what it is. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I'm just but like, I'm just throwing that out there just for the fun of it. <laughs> we have I have crucifixes in all the rooms in my house. And a lot of people at my new Lutheran should be like, that's too Catholic. You can't do that. And like, we play, we pray the rosary. We have a little altar. So I'm too Catholic for my new Lutheran church, but I'm not Lutheran enough for my old church. I don't know. I'm weird. Oh, Inca the cat. She's ah, right. I have some knitting just on the side here, and I don't know whether you can see. She's just plucked it. Ah. I think she didn't shed on it like that side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure she'd be up to that. <laughs> it's like, it's like she's been. Out of the way all morning, all day today, she's just been sleeping. And now I've gone live, pressed the button, and she's literally starting to play up. <clears throat> Who needs I was kids? Listening, got cats? I was listening to a podcast, and they were talking. She had she was blocking a shawl, and her cat got on it, and she made a hole because she was doing this. And she's like, I had to go to therapy. She was so devastated that they ruined the shawl. <laughs> Did it actually pluck a, a hole in it? Oh, my God. So she must have walked away from it and left it. Uh, oh, I have to block things somewhere else. I can, you know, if it's a big thing, I can't block here. I've got a spare room, but the problem is if I... I mean, I could just be hard and horrible and close the door, but they can't stand a closed door, and they'll cry at a closed door nonstop. <laughs> and it does my head in, so I just can't, you know... Whereas I should be a bit tougher, really, and say, no, that's it, shut up. And then they'd get used to it after a while. But, um, <laughs> so what? tell us about your knitting. What have you been working on? Fucking nothing I'm supposed to be working on. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you say all the time? Is it that? Yes, because it's really true. I'm awful. <laughs> this is my newest shawl design, South oh, by Southwest. That's another an texture. Another no needle, no gauge, no instructions. <laughs> is that the pattern or the yarn that's made that texture? Because it's uh... it's the yarn. Hang on, I dropped some stitches. It's it. It's Surrey Alpaca DK. Ah. So it's like. Right. And how's that to knit with? Um, it's a it's a pain in the ass, actually. Yeah. I don't, I, like I don't like that Surrey Alpaca myself. I prefer um mohair, I think. I like the feel of the Surrey Alpaca more because it's a lot more fluffy and soft. When it's finished, but, when you've knitted it, you mean, don't you? Yeah. 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 But it's a pit, and I don't like the mohair because I feel like it gets caught in my throat when I cough. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> there you go. Token cough, just yeah. a point. <laughs> but this is, you cast on and you increase until you run out of yarn. And then once you get your new skein, you decrease. And it's based off of a show in Murder, um, she wrote, that was based in the desert. And I thought these were gorgeous, kind of like desert um, colors. Yeah. But it's Knitting McCurley. Dressed in DK. Oh, her she colors are really nice, aren't they? There's something, because um, I got some of her minis. I got that bouquet of minis or whatever it was called. I can't remember. Yeah. And well, I these really are in like... there. That should be in there. Because this is Phantom. Uh, I don't remember that, what this color is. Is it bougie? Is it called bougie or something like that? It's kind of like the pinky one, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I don't know why. There's something quite muted about the colors that I like. Even the bright ones, are they're not quite as um, garish as some other ones. Yeah. <clears throat> Paisley's told me that it's because it's fluffy. That's how she says fluffy. it. Fluffy. <laughs> she will be, and she's even because she likes it so much. She goes, "I'll be the model for the knitting pattern," <laughs> and then it's hers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, "Can I have it?" And I go, "Well, I got a model." She goes, "Well, you can take a picture of me in it, and then you can give it to me, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to be like marking her territory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do what the yeah. cats do. She pisses on it. Nobody else will want it. <laughs> 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 but this will be in. The newest issue of Block, the Bare Arms. Wow, you've not got long. Well, I'm only on the I'm on the decreases now, uh, so it won't take. I mean, it took me two days to knit this, and then my life went crazy, and I stopped knitting. But now I'm back at it. Yeah, because the cutoff is the fifteenth of yeah. What are we now April. Uh, April, isn't it? Fifteenth of April. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm at that point where I'm starting to get um, a bit nervous about the next issue. This always happens, though. There's always a lull where nothing comes in. So I've had like one submission, but I know they're just gonna they're all gonna come in like one after the well, other. Well, I have I have an article I'm writing, but I my computer's broke, so I either need to like write it out and then take a picture of it and send it to you for you to type. Oh my God! You're, you're <laughs> as bad as Anne Pinkover. Are you going to write it with a feathered pen with <laughs> dipped ink? <laughs> what's happened to your computer? What have you done? What's Wayland done to it? <laughs> he brought. Yeah, it was actually Wayland, and he cracked the screen, and then he destroyed the charger. So I can't. I have no access to my email because I had my email on the computer. My murderous email. I can't get access to it anymore. And I try to like reset my password on my phone, and it's like we sent an email to your inbox, and oh. it's. <laughs> oh my god! So what are you gonna do? Ah, well, at least you know the hard drive will be okay, though, won't it? Whatever, whatever else is wrong with it, the hard drive is. Yeah, fine. yeah, no, it's the so... screen is is cracked, and then the charger has been demolished, so I can't even charge it. <laughs> <laughs> so you might be able to use it, even though the screen's cracked, if you can talk the charger out. Yeah. Wow. Let this be a lesson. This is co use contraception, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so Waylon is actually here because of natural family planning, if that tells you anything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. Okay. <laughs> the Lutheran family planning. <laughs> <laughs> we actually used the Catholic app, but I still got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So. <laughs> Pretty much everything that breaks in your house, you you know it's Waylon, don't you? It's like it's him or Paisley because they usually are fighting. <laughs> so. Paisley looks too innocent <laughs> to do anything like that. No, she's ornery. <laughs> she is the neglected. What do they call it? The neglected middle child, uh, like the redheaded right. stepchild. She is ornery. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. <laughs> Oh, did you like? Um, I've um, <laughs> I've changed uh, the. Actually, is it in this issue? Ah, I won't talk about it now. I'll talk about it when we start going through the issue. I was going to mention the uh, the sweater thing, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, okay. Well, what are you knitting on, Neil? This is a knitting well, podcast. <clears throat> yeah, you wouldn't believe it, would you? Uh, <laughs> I have a couple of projects on the go, which you've already seen. Well, people have already seen. I'm um, still doing the the man boob. What's it called? Um, <laughs> The Gardel Marl sweater. Yeah, the Gardel Marl. It's actually in time out at the moment because I just had enough of it. But I will finish it. I just and also I, once I've finished it, then I can send you that yarn because uh, you. I do have a package. 
of yarn I need to send to you, but I, we have a special mailing center and like they'll see which one's the cheapest, which way to mail it. Right. Okay. Well, and don't, so I'm no waiting. Much, there? So, you know, wait until well, I want to get out of my house because it's on the way. <laughs> it's like a big <laughs> box of yarn. Well, every time you see it, you go, oh, that's for that. <laughs> what is it? That rat bastard meal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've been, um, I've got that on hold at the time for the time being. I'm also doing a crochet, uh, sort of cardigan thing for me mom it's recreating a pattern not a pattern but a something she bought from the shop but it's really boring uh what else am i working on uh i've been knitting a hat which hasn't been working so it's one i've designed it's got cables on it but i am really bad at knitting cables and it doesn't matter what i do and it's because of the style that i do you know because i do the portuguese style i just cannot get that first knit or the last knit of the cable to be neat. And I've done all of the um, tricks that they all tell you to do, you know, whoa, what are you doing? You Are we still live? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Move, come on, out of the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought then. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing all the little tricks that you're supposed to do to tighten it up, and it just isn't working for me. So I've kind of put that to one side for the moment. Um, and the only other thing I've been doing is um, kind of what is, I don't know what I'm actually going to make, but I bought one of those um, Addy king size knitting machine things, you know, the round knitting machines. So I've knitted a couple of tubes, like, what do you do with a tube? Um, but what I've finally got to work is how to do it flat. So this is just some stash, sort of mostly acrylic. And I thought what I could do is do a couple of panels flat and then sew them together and just see how wide that is and see what I can actually make with this. Uh, because I think this would be, I don't know, would it be, it'd be a child's sweater size, wouldn't it? But obviously it's nowhere near big enough for an adult, I don't think. You know, it's going to be, a, I don't know. But uh, So I'd have to have at least two panels front and back and it might look really stupid, but it's been quite interesting to do it because it's not as easy as you think it would be. Do you, have you got one? Did you have? Have you had? No. Have you ever used? I one? had. I I used to have a knitting machine from the eighties that you would like set up and you would crank back and forth. Oh, very expensive. Had, yeah, and I wish I didn't get rid of it, but I had oh, one wow. of those. It was given to me. And that was a lot of fun. I used to listen when I was in high school. I hated my family that I lived with. And so I would stay up in my room by myself and I would knit on my knitting machine. And I would listen to Coast to Coast AM with George Nori about Bigfoot and ghosts. <laughs> I was in high school. So you could have been Bigfoot knits. <laughs> I could have. And that might have been misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we've had a few questions come in. Um, Texas Sheep, did Neil's hand record? Do you mean my finger? Yes, it did. It's perfectly fine. I, I show it every now and again. Um, so it's kind of straight now. However, I still wear this because, um, especially if I'm doing anything, because I keep hitting it all the time. And I think that is what made it happen in the first place. So literally, whatever I'm doing, for some reason, this hits everything. It hits doors. It hits the cooker. It hits the table. I don't know like what it is. So it's like when you stub your toe, <laughs> then you yeah. keep hitting it on everything. <laughs> I've been cursed. I think um, <laughs> one of the, the evil knitters has cursed me to have, but at least it's just that finger. I mean, it'd be better if it was my middle finger, because then I can sh give show people the finger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other question, when you do your great USA tour, where are the ugly cats going? Well, it's been a bit of a, a worry. Uh, but I've got three people <laughs> who can um, step in. So I've got one friend who lives where I am. She's just a couple of floors down, so she'll come in every day. And then I've got two other friends who will pop in once a day as well. So um, they're not going to be happy with me, though. When I come back, they will probably be really, really standoffish. And I've got to decide what I should do if anything happens to them. So it's like if, if um, you know, one of them gets really ill, do I just have to let it happen or do I fly back in an emergency to, you know, be there for the last moments of a cap? So I think, you know, it's little things like that I have to think about. When are you coming to America? I missed this. Well, it's it's all a bit up in the air because I was, um, Anne and I were talking and I'm still umming and hour, and although time's passing, 
uh, and I was thinking of going to Nitty McPurley's retreat, and that's going to be in Dallas. But then, obviously, not just for a weekend. I was going to stay for about three weeks and trying to work out where I could go. So, and the part of the plan, actually, I won't say what part of the plan was because I don't know whether Anne would want people to know. But there was another part of it which would have been really fun if I do it. I mean, I still might do it. I might not. Um, but it's a lot of money that weekend, and I just think, you know what? It's it's a lot of flights I could could be using to go and see other parts, you know, because I if I come over, I'm probably going to have to have at least four internal flights at least to try and see people I want to see. I mean, there's obviously going to be people I can't see. It's not going to work out. But, you're like um, me. You're like, don't want to see that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have to live in the most remote part, don't you? The furthest possible I would, place. I could fly to Vegas. Super easy. Oh, but I don't. I've never wanted to go to Vegas. It's so weird. It's the one place in America I've never wanted to go because I just think it must be so. Yeah, but Liz lives in Vegas, and we could go to the murder museum. The what museum? The murder, the mob museum. There's a murder museum there. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I think you might have mentioned it at some point, but I forgot. Ah, right. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Well, the plan in my the, the vague plan is Florida because I've got friends in Florida. Uh, Dallas or somewhere in Texas because I'd quite like to see Kerry as well. Um, there's obviously there's the um, Nevada. Then there's uh, I wouldn't if you if you go to Nevada I wouldn't bother going to Oregon. Um, there's also <laughs> Minnesota, and I'd have to go to New York, wouldn't I? I mean I can't. Uh, oh, if Amy's watching, she'll be saying and New Orleans. Although I'm saying it wrong. I can't remember how you say it. Um, but but again, New Orleans is one of them places where I just think I'd probably just be melting because of how hot it is. And so well, I will not be going to the Nitty McPurley retreat. It would cost me over two grand. Wow. How much what is that for flights? Well, it's what is it? It's five hundred and forty. Five hundred for the retreat. Not including... and then you have to pay the hotel and then the flights. Are ridiculous. Even though I'm in Oregon and it's in Texas, right? Yeah, because I was working and I was thinking, yeah, I would need just for that part of the trip, I would need a thousand dollars just for that weekend, and that isn't, you know, spending money. Even you know, there's still some meals you have to pay for that. Um, I mean, this is going to be like really bad, but honestly, two grand to go to a Denny McPhilly retreat? No, thank you. I'd rather go to Vegas. <laughs> Well, or, you know, I, go keep, to somewhere else. I keep talking myself in and out of it, and also I'm not even sure whether she'd want me to be there because I know. Yeah, see, I would. I wouldn't be you know, welcome there, so I'm like, why would you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure she'd be welcoming, but I think she would probably, you know, in a heart of hearts, wish I wasn't going if I did buy a yeah. ticket. So I think, well, rather than having that that extra bit of baggage to contend with. Um, maybe not go to it and then at least the one you know whatever we do you know when I come over will be with people who actually would want to meet up and would want to do something you know so yeah. I'm kind of talking myself out of it as I speak the other thing I've got to consider as well oh, what are you doing I don't know you can... oh, god um the other thing I've, I've got to think about is medical insurance because that's something I've not checked about yet um because with because I've got a few health conditions I've got a feeling that health insurance might be quite, you know, extortionate, you know, especially in your country. And I'm not sure. I think how many millions would I need to be insured for, do you think? Well, I'm sure we could take you out some – I don't worry. We could pick some cherries so you can get some money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, or the, the lucrative world of cherry picking. <laughs> <laughs> well, DK mentioned about flying into Toronto rather than flying in – or out of Toronto rather than New York if I was going to see DK. She lives nearer to Canada than she does New York City, doesn't she, I think. But I don't know whether I'm allowed in Canada, so I will have to sort of do a bit of research first because, um, you know, I don't want to be turned away at the border, you know. Um, uh, oh, just a few comments coming. Let me just check. Uh, I have it on good authority that some of us very cool people are going to Nitty McPurley's retreat. I hope you get to come. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, there are some, you know, I know some very cool people will be going. I know that, but I don't know whether, because um, I know Devin doesn't like any of the drama that surrounds Block Magazine. So, um, you know, and then it, it kind of, if you've got, 
if you're notorious in any way, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm so important or anything, but things end up becoming about the notorious person rather than what it's supposed to be about, you know. So um, I'm just a little bit conscious of that. Uh, oh, this is how you're supposed to say Norleans. Norleans? New, New Orleans? Norleans? Um, Norleans. Norleans. Tabitha, Devin will try to match people up to share hotel costs. I don't think Tabitha doesn't play well with others. <laughs> Who would you share with? No. You... <laughs> well, no, I would be fine, but it's it's like to spend that amount of money to go to a place where I'm not welcome. No, thank you. Like I love Devin's yarn, I love her patterns, but it would not. I could not be myself there, and I wouldn't yeah. want that for Devin. So it's like, why? Like I'm happy yeah. for everybody else that's going. It is that Have thing fun. as well, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you. It's, it's almost like I know if I go in some way, I will spoil that event for Debbie, and you probably feel the same way. Something would happen, or something would be said that would end up being there'd be a little mini drama somewhere. And yeah, I like Debbie, and I kind of, you know, I want her to have it to be successful, you know. So I kind of. You know, I, I I did consider contacting her and asking, and then I thought, well, I don't even want to put her on the spot, really. You know, I don't I don't want to ask because she's not going to say no. You're not welcome. You know, even if I wasn't welcome, you know, because she's not that kind of person, really. Well, I don't think she is. Um, I think that Devin is is in a weird place in her business where she's kind of shifted, and she's trying to become this big person. Which great, I'm not saying don't do this, you know, but she's changed to become this more household name and this bigger person in the knitting business. And when that happens, you kind of, I don't want to say change yourself or change who you are, but there's definitely been a shift in who she is and what she's doing. And there's some people that knew her from the beginning, uh, myself included, that would not be welcome in that shift. Publicly. She's almost in a, She's almost in a middle position, isn't she? Between the two camps, I say the two camps. Yeah. You know the, you know the woke people, and you know, I don't even know what we would class ourselves as. Well, conservative Normal. or whatever. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> Deplorables or whatever. Um, yeah. So she's, <laughs> and I think she's definitely trying to build her business back up again from whatever it, to whatever it was before. And she, yeah, she's got a foot in both a little bit, really. Um, but, um, oh, here we go. Uh, we could all pitch tents at my place in Texas and have a low-cost anti-retreat. Anti <laughs> I'm too posh for tents. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not that I'm too posh. I'm too old. <laughs> if I slept in a tent, it's got to be raised off the floor so many feet because I wouldn't get up again. <laughs> oh, um, yarn, chicken, and shit. He said, oh, I'll tell you what's funny. is when Devin Yeah, said, I'll just go to Tara's house. Fine. Yeah, she doesn't say yarn, chicken, and shit, does she? Definitely says yarn, chicken, and stuff, I think she says. Um, yeah, we'll all just go to, to yarn, chicken, and shit's house. <laughs> I'm sure she wouldn't be happy yeah. about that. Um, One thing I wish it. Devin would realize is that the people on the left side are never going to accept her, no matter what. No. There's always going to be someone. But I do, I wonder, oh, I shouldn't say this really, but I wonder whether she's still in touch with some of the people from before, uh, such as like the grocery girls, for example. And I just wonder whether, you know, she's just keeping things, you know, neutral to, um, which is, per you know, it's fine for it to be neutral, isn't it? Um, sorry, I feel like we're talking about it when we shouldn't be, but um, nothing bad. Uh, so thrifty, <laughs> yeah, you don't. <laughs> yeah, but that's the difference, Tabby, that I'm a nice person <laughs> with a conscience. <laughs> Whatever. I won't sleep at night if I think I've hurt someone. No. Um, so the thrifty chickadee, uh, Neil. I think it's very stand up of you to realise that it could become about. Listen, it's always about me. <laughs> <laughs> Complete narcissist. I'm a narcissist. No, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> I have narcissistic tendencies, as most people on YouTube do. If we're honest, <laughs> um, she's trying to appeal to them. Yeah, possibly. I think she's. I think she's just trying to build a business, isn't she? Really. Um, <laughs> yes, I definitely am a glamper, less of a camper, yeah. I, although, you know, in my youth, I, I lived in um, a tent in a garage for in Canada for, ooh, must have been a month. So I've done, I feel like I've done my dues. I've, I've done my, you know, living it rough. Now I need a bit of comfort. 
<laughs> so I can hear your needles clicking away. Are you still working on your shawl, or is this a different project now? Yeah. Oh, I've, um, I'll show you one silly little thing that I made last night, although you can't really tell what it is at the moment. Um, I've got this friend, and I think I mentioned it a while back, one of her close friends died last year, and her close friend was a crocheter and a knitter, and she used to knit all these silly things and crochet little things for her. She's got this obsession with, the, you know, like Japanese people do, with teeny tiny things, you know, and... I can't crochet things that small, you know, because of my big fat hands. But anyway, her latest thing that she's asked me to make is a moon. So it needs to be stuffed, and it doesn't look much. It looks more like a cross, croissant, a croissant at the moment. But uh, once it's stuffed, it's quite cute. It's a moon. So I made that last night. Um, pretty simple. It looks a bit out of shape at the moment, but I think when the stuffing all is in it, it'll look fine. So that's that. Looks like a, looks like a fortune cookie. Ah, it, ah, it does actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a it's a, a a strange crochet pattern. It's um it's not very instinctive because you you start off doing a um an, a misshaped circle and then it gets weirder and weirder and then when you put it together it stays as a weird shape like crescent shape like that. Um, but apart from that, that's about all of my stuff that I've been doing recently. Uh, the trouble with doing you know doing so much magazine stuff is that you lose that that thing of knitting for fun you know it's it becomes a job doesn't it boy i feel that i've lost my mojo i'm just like i don't even want to fucking knit <laughs> do, you, do you know i had that same thing this last week i i had a moment where i thought do you know what i don't think i would be that bothered if i never picked up knitting needles again and then i thought but what would i do with all that yarn and then i kind of <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of talked myself back into needing to knit again. So I need, I think I just need to find a project for me rather than trying to design stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? Because it kind of takes the fun out, doesn't it? Oh, I, just, um, I don't know. I get so wrapped up in all these like knit along. And I'm not saying I'm not going to do them, so don't come for me, deal. <laughs> 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 but I get like, and then I have all these things I want to knit, and I'm just like, I have so many things going. I'm just like, don't do anything. Ah, yeah. What pro is it? Procrastination? Do they call it? Too many things, so you do nothing. Yeah, I know that. I've got. I need to tidy my flat up. It's really bad at the moment. Really bad. And um, I just, I just can't face it at the moment. I keep using excuses. The cats are getting in the way to do anything. When obviously I, they just moved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I have two. Even Devin is taking a designing break. Ah, so maybe there's something in the air. Um, but I'm approaching in the summer. So when it gets to like July, August, I will end up doing nothing. And I'm planning ahead for that this year. Because last year I didn't do any magazine work either during the summer. I caught up at the end of the year. But this year I'm going to try and um, get some guest editors in for that particular uh, issue. And um, I'm just sit back as you all fight over it, see who wants to do it, and <laughs> see whether you all get along or not. But, um, I will not be um, doing any of that, so <laughs> worry about me trying to take that over. Are you not even going to try and get on the cover for that issue? Nope. <laughs> oh, my, next cover, my next cover that I want to be on is the Cold Heart issue. Oh, the, that'll be December. Yeah, but yeah. Carol Baskin, because I have an idea for a photo shoot in mind, I'm trying, I really want to get a big cat, and I know where I can get a wolf. <laughs> cat. Hmm. What could you do instead? <laughs> You'd have to, well, have hoping... to knit one quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband has a cougar tag, and I'm thinking, oh, if he killed a cougar, I could, like, have that, like, in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, just held up, holding it up by a yeah. collar. So... <laughs> well, you could do some trick photography and have a, a normal pussycat at the front but take it so it looks like it's huge you know with well, you I feel, i've even tried like nobody we have some people like i have people that have like barn cats but like not a lot of people have like actual cats See, like, now, that i know we live, of if we live nearer yeah you could have ollie because ollie looks a bit like a tiger in well in a weird way Oh, I need to warn everyone, North Star's about to do something. So if, if we get cut off, I'll redo it. <laughs> what? Why? What are you doing? <coughs> sniffing the keyboard. 
Well, I have two accusations I can show. Ah, nice. So Amy of Two Sisters and Some Yarn showed this off in a finished object on her podcast. And I had to have it, even though it's fucking cotton and it's <laughs> threaded. Right, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm going to hate it, but it was gorgeous. Well, I've got I some. Got that one too. Yeah, I've got some as well that I bought a few years ago. Not, it's not the same, but it's similar. And I kept looking at it, thinking, well, whatever I make with it, it's going to have to be a pie shawl because I want it yeah. to do that exact thing, you know, the from the light to the dark. Um, and I did, and I, but the I think Amy said knitting with it isn't very nice, but crocheting with it's okay. So I'm yeah, going well, to crochet. I don't crochet one. So. Well, but what I a shame. That, only you did. I know. <laughs> I have family that live in the desert, and so I thought this would be nice as a blanket instead of like a wool blanket. Uh, I think we know why the cat is sniffing the uh, keyboard. <laughs> yes, probably. Probably. Oh, I don't know what, uh, I'm not sure what this refers to. Chinese spy balloons. Oh. I do. And what's that? Oh, right. Okay. Your Is moon. It? Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> completely lost with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Will it be? Um, I, are you going to do? I think you'd have to do something lacy, wouldn't you? Because, or are you going to hold it double? Well, so Tara knows this pattern, the um, tree ring pattern. I thought about doing. It's like it's a pie shawl, and it goes out, and there's no. Gingy Knits has a blanket that I've done that has eyelets increases. I've done that a bunch of times. But then the tree ring sweater doesn't have eyelet increases. And I thought about doing that. But I don't know. I have three skeins of each. And so I thought, well, I could hold it double. But then I'd have two and then one left over. And that's not... I wish I got four because then I could that, have it. If you do a sweater, are you going to have a point where the color isn't going to flow anymore because obviously if you're doing a, a yoke sweater you'll get the neck and the body flow, yeah. won't you? but then how are you going to manage the sleeves are you just going to have to make it work or are you not going to worry too much i'm not i'm just going to do a pie blanket shawl <laughs> well i've been meaning to i've just been saying i don't <laughs> want to design anymore I just want to knit for me but i've been thinking about designing a pie shawl because the um once you get the actual increases right you could do really cool uh, designs because there's no shaping yeah. in the design bits. Although you'd have to make sure if it was lace, if uh, the, the lace you know would match the gauge, wouldn't it? But if you did, but you could do fair aisle, couldn't you? Because it is all in the round, even though you I'm wouldn't not show. If I if I did a fair, I wouldn't mind doing a fair aisle pie shop, but not with these. Mm, yeah, is that? Um... Yeah, it wouldn't work with but, those, really, would it? Because you'd have well, to. Well, I'd want the, I'd want the gradient to show, and that's one thing. I don't know if I want to do lace or not because, like, that gets really dark, and that's hard to see lace when it gets dark like that. Depends what you put it against, though, doesn't it? You know what you're wearing it with, or what where you. My white <laughs> skin. What naked? You're going to be wearing it <laughs> naked. <laughs> yeah. You could make one of those. Have you seen? <laughs> I don't know whether I like them, though. I think they're a bit... But have you seen the pie shawl jacket things where they put holes in and then you can wear it like a, a cardigan? I've, no seen, I've seen that done with a lot more crocheted, though. Yeah, they probably are, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Pity you can't crochet. Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> I love saying that because of how fast you are at knitting. It's the only way I can uh, <laughs> have any kind of <laughs> knit superiority over you, isn't it? <laughs> Well, should we um, dive straight into issue 13? Dive straight in. We've been talking for uh, how long? <laughs> Probably yeah. an hour already. <laughs> yeah, we have minutes. 35 minutes. Wow. Yeah, we need to get going, really, don't we? So, um, oh, how long have you got today? Two hours. I've got hours. all day. Ah, right. Okay. Is everyone, uh, right, get your snacks in, everybody, because we might be on all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. So, uh, oh, how do I do this? We had a bit of problems before, didn't we? You have to leave it on your screen, remember? That's right. So now is that... Oh, so anyway, we've got this very odd model here. Don't know much about her. Um... So funny thing about this photo exactly is where we were shooting this photo, it's a real tourist place, 
And these people kept walking up to my husband who was taking my photo. And they're like, don't you want to be in the picture with her? Here, we'll take a picture with you or together. I'm like, no, I don't want a picture with him. This yeah, is not what it's know. for. I'm a model. <laughs> <laughs> this is for a cover. <laughs> so I, I was like, this is for a magazine. Like, he's all bundled up in rain gear because it's pouring down rain. And they're like, well, don't you want a picture with her? And he's like, no, I don't. Thanks. <laughs> See, that's so God. funny. If that was in the UK, nobody would even <laughs> talk to you. You know, they wouldn't have even said that, you know. Uh, I'll tell you what. I think Tom did an excellent job of these photos. And I do admit to being a little bit worried when you said you were going to do it. Because I was like, oh, God, you know, if it's not clear enough or, you know, what? how am I going to say, you know, that, you know, it's not good enough for the cover. Um, but. <laughs> It was so clear that it made a problem with the logo. So then the logo wasn't the same um, high definition as the photo. So we had to touch the logo up a little bit so that it still worked. Um, but what I thought was brilliant, and I don't know whether he knew about it. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to... Uh, this, when you zoom in, it either zooms in too much or doesn't do it enough. So I'll leave it as it is at the moment. So what I loved about this is, is this sort of circular window in the tree. And I think it is such a good composition. And I bet he didn't even know he was doing it. Or did he? Did you, no. It, he, no. Um, <laughs> and... It's like, are we fucking done yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'll take all the compliments back because it's a happy he was so He was so over me. by the, This is the last photo he did. <laughs> and he was like, fucking be done. He was over it. <laughs> Well, what I liked as well, and again, I think this is probably an accident, or, or did you have this in mind, is the fact that it's like blood red and everything else around it. It's like the Hitchcock, uh, the birds. That film, if the dress that she wears is a particular shade of green, that is the opposite colour to blood red so that the blood would show up. And that green is in the colour of the foliage behind you. So everything about it, sort of colour-wise, works really well. And so well that I had to be really careful with the logo because my first instinct was to use red in the logo. And then I thought, no, if I use red in the logo, it's going to take away the red from the picture. And the fact that mm -hmm. you're quite flushed in the picture as well works. You know what I mean? Because... I don't know. There's I was, just something about I was it testing was really it up a hill to get to that spot. I was out of breath. <laughs> I did not mean to have red cheeks. <laughs> the only thing, I've said this before, but I just think, you know, just in the background, under the tree there, just under the um, shawl, I think you could have, you should have put Tom's boots so it looked like a dead oh. body, you know. that would. There have were so many good. people around us, it would have been. Because <laughs> I was going to have, like, a gun, too, and, like, a prop, and it was... There was, it was whale watching weekend at the cliffs. Oh, did you actually take the guns with you? Yes. Oh, right. Oh, God. Yeah, you, you might be in prison by the end of the day. We didn't realize there. that it was whale watching weekend at the cliffs where we went, and it's kind of illegal to have guns there. <laughs> We're oh, like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, there would be phot photographic evidence of you having guns <laughs> in a place where you're not allowed to have <laughs> Yeah, probably best that you didn't use the guns on that picture then. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I just want to check. We've got a few comments on... Um, uh, where is it? I love the cover photo, especially like the greys with the red and the black. It's really good. Yeah, I, I just think the colours work so well. And, you know, obviously it's a happy accident, isn't it? But you can pretend it was all intentional. <laughs> just like uh, Waylon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was intentional. Come on. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, people seem to like that cover. Um, strangely. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> right. So let's get on and get into inside because you you feature heavily inside as well, don't you? It's like this is definitely your issue. I think you need to get this printed off and have it as a framed on the wall. I should. Next to yeah. my yarn stash. That'd be good. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay, so issue 13. <laughs> so this is our first, no, what, what? how many years have we been going? So this is the third year, is it? Is it the third year? The first I issue no of our clue. third year? Yes, it is. So this was our second birthday anniversary issue. So uh, yeah, the, the first of the three years. Um, so we, we're changing a couple of things with the, the magazine, which you'll have noticed or not noticed. Uh, so one of the first things is we're going to be having, I think I've said it before, but we're going to be having all of our knitting and crochet 
abbreviations either at the front or the back, and they're not always going to be with the pattern unless it's something very specific to that pattern that you're not going to see in any of the other patterns. So if you're looking for the abbreviations, you'll find them all here. Uh, we've also got um, heads of department now. So uh, Am I on there? <laughs> yeah, what, what are you head of? What do you... <laughs> everything are you like the boss of everything <laughs> no i almost put on the under my name i put, almost put founder of women of lot <laughs> <laughs> but that's a secret <laughs> <laughs> well yes just keep women of blocked in the back of your mind you'll you'll need it later not today but you'll need it at some point um yeah you could well yeah you could have that on there if you want uh so what i did for this issue of yeah, it was this issue. Everyone's got a um, a promotion because it's like, why the fuck not? Nobody gets paid, so we can just call <laughs> ourselves anything we like. And if your name's on this list and you don't like what I've called you, you can have another name. It's not going to affect anything. So Am instead I of even editor, on there? You should be. Cover photography, Tabitha oh. of Murdernitz, although it should be Tom of Murdernitz. And you're also, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're also in the pattern designers. Oh. And... Uh, we put you first in the pattern designers. Yeah, does that make you happy? Uh, yeah. And I think that's that's the only two. Yeah, so you mentioned twice. That's more than most people. <laughs> you just want it all to be your name, don't you? Everything, every single thing. Your I need name. to be right under editor in chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so people will think you might be the editor in chief. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to find you a job. We'll have to give you a role. I don't know what some. Give us some ideas for roles. Yeah, so our heads of department. Um, so the head idea sandwich maker, this... head sandwich maker. He should put that on there. <laughs> yeah, head sandwich maker, raw milk promoter, and yes. uh, what is it? Trad wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So now we uh, with the head, <laughs> it's gonna. It just takes a little bit of pressure off me, and the idea is that um, in everyone everyone who's ahead is going to um, either source an article or a piece for the magazine, or they're going to actually create an article for the magazine. And it just means that there's like six pieces that that particular person will need to find or create as opposed to, you know, all of them. Like that's how I, you know, so it just takes a little bit of the pressure off because there's other things that I've been doing, like designing cross stitch and things like that. So, um, so we've got, um, Cezanne is our copy editor, tech editor, and head of games and puzzles. And so uh, Cezanne's been doing uh, all the tech editing because she's doing the tech editing course at the moment. And she's she's brilliant at it, I have to say. But we're also going to be having um, Annie of A Stitch in the Sky. She's going to be doing the course as well in the summer, I think. I need to check with her. Um, so we're going to have two tech editors on board, which is invaluable you know with the whole um ugly cat shawl debacle we uh i can't stress enough how important tech editors are <laughs> um we've also got uh i don't know whether i can say i've got another review writer as well so we've got somebody on board who's going to be writing reviews of patterns i'm not going to say who yet because um <laughs> no, i don't know don't sit in my patterns <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're starting with your patterns. Uh, <laughs> so it's um, so it's someone who's she's quite a pro prolific knitter, and what she'll be doing is she's going to be uh, reviewing old and new patterns, whatever it is that she actually knits next. So you know, um, it's not going to well, be safe because I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you might be all right for a while, for a while, um, and um, I think it's going to be quite interesting because. Um, She's very, very, she doesn't mince her words and she's going to tell you, you know, bones and all about every pattern that she knits. And even if she ends up frogging it and it's a failure, she's still going to write about it. So that's coming up. I'll, we'll tell you about that probably next yeah. issue. Hopefully uh, we'll have more information on that. Uh, we're still going to be doing the reviews on the book. So Katie will still be doing those, which has been fun. She's been working on one for the next issue. And I feel so sorry for her because it was me that wanted her to do it. And it was a particular book where this woman claimed to have created this new way of doing something. I'm not going to say much more than that. But poor Katie had to knit one of the patterns out of the book to actually understand the process. And 
I don't think it was an enjoyable experience for us. So, <laughs> so the review kind of reflects that. Um, but it's worth reading because you'll probably come across this book at some point and you need to be aware of it, you know, the downfalls of it. So anyway, the usual preamble that I put in there, the usual nonsense, not even sure what I wrote there. Um, probably most of the stuff that I've just said, actually. <laughs> so this is um, Katie's uh, review of, uh, this is part two of her review of three books, I think it was, that she did. And it was about designing your own sweaters. So the um, Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters, the, um, I think she did Anne Bud's book, and I think she did, um, oh, who else did she do? She did, um, did she do the Monty Stanley book last issue? I can't remember now, but there were three really good ones, uh, good books that she reviewed. Do you only have her review in non-fiction books, or are you going to have her move to, like, fiction knitting books, too? Uh, when you say fiction knitting books, what do you mean? Oh, what does that say? Oh, I hadn't thought. Because uh, I have two books that are heavily based in knitting. The Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs, and then The Knitting Circle by Anne Hood. And that might be a nice break for her. It's heavily mm. knitting. And it might be a nice break for her to give a review on a fictional book about a knitting shop or someone who's a knitter. I'll, I don't know that she's what if she's watching now, just let us know if you if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, I'll send her a message and ask her because I think um I think she is looking for something a little bit different, actually. And then uh, I have this one is a series, the Beach Street. Knitting Society and Yard Club, based out of a yarn shop in England. Oh. And it's a three books here. It's a very good series. You have to read it. It's not an audible, which is kind of lame. Are they, but I've got a, are they actually good? Because I always imagine that books about... 10 books out of 10. Shit. Wow. The knitting, the knitting Circle by Anne Hood is how this lady, um, her daughter dies. It's very sad. Like, trigger warning if you, like, kid lost. But it's how knitting like saved her. Right. And then the Friday Night Knitting Club is amazing. Amazing. Is there a murder by any chance? No. Well, there's a death, but it's not a murder. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know well, if you I'll like definitely... it because you're a man, but. <laughs> right. Well, I'll put it to Katie. If she's not interested, then perhaps you could do it. This is the thing about suggesting something. If somebody suggests something, it suddenly becomes their thing to do. Have you noticed? <laughs> yeah, well, I will just say the book is the bomb. Read it. That's all. Like I'm not good at like expanding. <laughs> yeah, you'll just write ten out of ten or seven out of ten, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> no more. No. But less. it might be a nice brain break for her. Like if she listens to them. Well, know, yeah, like... I don't know whether. Um... Because I think there's two aspects to it, isn't there? One is the having to actually read a textbook. You know because you've got to read it cover to cover to be able to review it. And then it's different if with this last one, she had to actually knit a sweater. So that added to the workload for her of it as well. Whereas there's one, um, one I'm, I'm hoping she'll do at some point. I think she's going to maybe do it towards the end of the year, but it's uh, this book. As, um, so it's, um, it's another one of those people that's claiming a very old technique as something they've invented. And um, it's like, um, I don't know how, how you explain it really, but you kind of, um, you knit each, sti each stitch kind of twice, kind of. Um, so, you know, like when you do a, um, you knit and then before you take the needle, uh, the stitch off the left needle, you kind of go back in and knit it again and it creates like a double stitch. It's something like that. I invented that in the murder knit shawl. Three oh, times, well, you knit three <laughs> times in one stitch. <laughs> so you need to sue her then, Tabitha. Sue her. I do. <laughs> well, this is more of a technique book rather than so you know you wouldn't have to actually knit a garment to test the theory of it. But um, I like the way the 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 stitches come out much um, shorter and much wider than they would un with a normal gauge. So. You'd have to, you know, I find it interesting to see how that would change things like fair isle designs and stuff like that. Um, but I think she'll do that at some point, but she, she wanted a break from that. She, I don't think she fancied that one. Um, but anyway, so, ah, this is something, you did this photo, didn't you? This bare arms photo for this ad. 
this was quite funny because I, I asked if you had a teddy bear and a gun and to take some photos. <laughs> and um, and I had to keep saying, can you have him the other way with the gun the other way? And then <laughs> you'd, I wasn't being specific enough because then you would change <laughs> something and suddenly it was like, no, I didn't mean that way. I meant the other way. <laughs> oh, what's funny is, is that Tom was helping me with this and he's like, <laughs> I'm not gonna. This is before we did the cover for murdered for the um, shawl, and he was like, "I'm not gonna take any more fucking pictures for Neil. This is ridiculous. You got a bear, and you got a gun." <laughs> and then, like a month later, I'm like, "Hey, we need to take photos for Neil." And he's like, "Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> well, can't help being a perfectionist. It has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it came out really well in the end. And you can't yeah. see, but all I did was change. So that's your green chair. It that's is. My, there. That's my knitting chair in the living room. Yep. Yeah. And I just changed the contrast on it so that it came up almost black. Um, so and that would uh, so there we, um, we're on to our first pattern of the issue, and this is the Let Them Live hat by Deplorable Knitter, and this was kind of designed in reaction to some um, Instagram posts where people were oh I don't know how to explain it really, but being we're not going to get into the whole abortion rights and wrongs thing at the moment, but it was about how gleeful they were to be donating money to fund abortions and they were sort of sharing it and on their business accounts and so on and then other people were forwarding it on and there was just this delight that i and it kind of really bothered me because it's like demonic you know, well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you take out whether you agree with the concept of it, but let's just assume that it's a neutral thing for now and that it's not good or not bad. I mean, we, we all have our opinions. But there's the the gleeful nature of it is what bothered me because it's kind of like, if you're going to support it, support it because, it, you know, as a medical thing, if that's what you think it is, like, are you going to be as gleeful about people having, I don't know, their adenoids taken out or you know, as gleeful about helping someone get their ingrown toenail operated. You know what I mean? It's kind of, yeah. there was, it's the fact that something ends up dead and they're really, really happy. That's what bothered me. So I talked with Deplorable about it because we feel very much the same on, uh, well, almost the same on this issue. So she designed this hat and um, it's kind of, um, I think it's a, it's a, a preemie hat, isn't it, as well? Yeah, it's well, it's newborn, so right up. So it's kind of, I don't know. It, there's not a lot you can do in these situations, so it was just what we felt was the only thing to do in response at that time, really. Uh, but it's a cute little hat. Uh, as usual, there's a dissident. Um, I'm still doing those, by the way. I don't know whether anyone ever knits them. <laughs> so I think people did it at the beginning. I don't know whether they do anymore. And now the uh, the Who Done It, we, we republished this, uh, the whole story. And um, but we only put the first chapter, I think it is, in the magazine, as you can see it. And then you click on the link on this second page here, and that takes you to the full story if you want to read it. And uh, this is another ad for a future issue. So this is issue 15, which is going to be out in July. The deadline for submissions is June 15. Uh, this was a photo that um, Anne Pinkover uh, <laughs> took of Wolverine wearing Paisley. a shawl. Paisley will be writing an article for that. Oh, really? Ah, cool. Yep. Oh. Am I her hero? No. <laughs> no, that's sure. Your arch nemesis ah, is her hero. <laughs> so does that mean Paisley's going to be on the cover? <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know. Dressed as Jessica Fletcher? <laughs> <laughs> um, did you ever uh, find that sweater pattern that you were trying to find? No, I think I'm going to have to design it myself because I can't find it anywhere. It looks like it's old cross-stitch chart. Yeah, it's the house. Is it Home Sweet Home or something? Is it called? Mm -hmm. or something like that? Right. I found some yeah. charts that are very similar that I think I could use, but I'm going to have to put it together myself. So, Neil, if you'd like to put this together for me. <laughs> I will have a go, actually, because I do I enjoy doing that. I think what... Yeah. Um, so it's a sweater that was on Murder, She Wrote that Jessica Fletcher was wearing, and it's a home sweet home. Like you say, it's like a cross-stitch design, isn't it? It's like a sampler yeah. design. And um, But what I can't remember, is it, a, is it a yoke design, or is it a drop sleeve, or is it knitted flat, or how have they it done looks it? Like, it, looks like a, it looks like it's knitted flat. I would do it in the round. I would not do it flat at all, because I can't do color work on a pearl side. Well, so would yeah. you, 
so if that was a design to to approach that design you would want it to be changed then to a yoke sweater mm -hmm. or would you would you do steaks or do you not i would seek i would seek because steaks like, would probably make it look more like the original wouldn't it yeah but i don't care if it looks like that i just want the charts ah oh right and that oh that's easy then yeah we'll do the charts um yeah because the charts will be really because i bet you looking on cross stitch things we'll probably find exactly well, and I've, some of the charts i found some of them i didn't but the charts i didn't found i figured we could zoom in on the sweater so you could just isolate that chart and copy it yeah that'd be easy. what else is on it is there anything else on it there's alphabet there's little like garden motifs just a bunch of little things and nobody could find a pattern for it anywhere i don't think it was ever a pattern it was like a design I found I could buy the original sweater for like three hundred dollars off of some like vintage shop. Jeez. But I'm not gonna do that. You're just gonna buy three hundred dollars worth of yarn and knit it yourself <laughs> and get it charted yourself. <laughs> yeah. oh, knitters are weird, aren't they? Um, yeah. But, this reminds me of um, that sweater that Anne Pinkover was looking for. You know the um, the Olympic um, Norwegian design thing. They do a an Olympic sweater every olympics yeah and it was the one with the dragons on it and um we were both trying to find it for her and i actually got through to um because I, I did it all in danish and in norwegian because it's pretty similar language um so i wrote the emails and said you know do you have this pattern and um the thing what was really good was the company themselves didn't have it but they thought i meant a different pattern and they just sent me the pattern so if they'd have had that pattern, they would have just sent it to me. You know, I wouldn't have had to have paid for it. But then I managed to find the designer herself who designed the original. And I asked her if she had it. And she even she didn't have it. So that pattern no longer exists in any way we can get. But somebody gave it to her. Somebody had it and has given her the pattern. So she has got it now. Um, which is a, I you know, was I thought it was maybe like a Rowan sweater. And, you know, because sometimes Rowan will design sweaters for movies and shows. And then eventually they'll either sell the pattern or, you know, like that. And so I was hoping it was a Rowan design because I can usually find those, but it's not. Well, I was wondering whether it was English with her being English and maybe it was it is, her it is, Well, the company that made it is an English company. Right. And who was it who did make it? It wasn't, was it Rowan? No, well, ah, you don't no it wasn't. It. But I was, I was hoping it was because sometimes they'll have things for movies and TVs and then they'll release the pattern or somebody will use a Rowan design sweater. And so the pattern already exists. You know who you could contact? Um, although you'd have to join for them to help you, but they, they'd probably be able to say whether they have it or not is the, um, the knitting and crochet guild in the UK because they have, is it all of Rowan's? They have all of, I don't know whether it's Rowan or Sirdar, I can't remember who it is now, but they've got all of their back catalogue of patterns. And if you're a member, you've got access to them and you just have to tell them which pattern you want and they then go and find it and send it to you. Um, I'll send so, you the um, picture of the sweater and you can see the tag. Ah, right, yeah. Get off of here. Yeah, send it because I'll, I'll, have a I'll work on the charts this weekend because I, I enjoy doing charts. Um, yeah. Anyway, so enough about Jessica Fletcher. So that's going to be in the Heroes <laughs> episode, which is going to be episode issue 15. And the thing about the title Heroes is it doesn't have to be superhero. So like all of the themes, you can interpret that any way you like. So Tabitha and Paisley have interpreted it to be their, their TV sleuth hero. Uh, yeah. But if you want it to be a superhero, you can. Although we do have to be careful with copyright with certain companies because certain companies get... Um, a little bit shitty over that. I don't know whether... I think DC are worse than Marvel for being shitty, I think. But I might be wrong. And speaking of Anne Pinkover, this was Anne's pattern. This was um, this was for... Because I helped her a little bit with this. Uh, and Katie... Um, oh, Katie um, Clark. Not Katie Clark. <laughs> it's really awkward, this. Because Katie Clark crochet. There's, there was another Katie Clark, and she was the one that went to prison who was one of Socrates' <laughs> bullies. And I, but I, I remember thought, that. I always say our Katie Clark. So our Katie Clark is a completely different Katie Clark, but she also has a crochet business as well. So <laughs> after, I always have to specify. Um, but we were, the three of us ended up looking at this um, quilt design that Anne found, and um, we kind of worked out ways 
to knit it in an easy way. And it's it's a it's a lovely pattern. Uh, I mean, I knitted one of the squares, but what I hate in Tarja, I really, really don't like it. Um, and um, even though it's just one simple intarsia swap, uh, I I just couldn't. Yeah, no, I don't like it. But the uh, the design itself, I think, is great, and it looks good as a finished piece as well. I think she did a good job of that. Excuse me. <clears throat> and ah, this was um, the piece that I wrote um, as a response to the abortion thing, and um, it kind of went through two incarnations because the first one I was. A little bit angry when I wrote it because I, I was quite angry when I saw the um, Instagram posts about the abortion thing, you know, the promoting of abortions, because I just think it's so inappropriate. You know, it's not something that I think should be promoted as, you know, if you're part of a business or whatever. Um, and uh, And it's also the way it's framed, you know, it's always disingenuous the way they frame it. It's not quite what they're saying. You know, and uh, so anyway, I wrote this piece and it did have to be changed a few times because there was um, uh, one of the things was I wanted it to be called incitement to murder. But quite rightly, Amy, Amy uh, of Two Sisters pointed out that technically, although we might feel that it is, you know, legally it isn't classed as murder. So it would be misleading of me to call it murder as well. Although I do hint very heavily that it is because in my view it is, although legally it isn't. Well, anyway, uh, but also what I wanted to do was have something to balance that. So um, uh, Mika in Stitches wrote um, a piece that kind of, I think, works really well with this. And this was about her story uh, connected with abortion and less angry, I feel, and a little bit more from a with a little bit more um, open to interpretation. So some people really will not agree with her, but some people will. But I just think. Uh, what people don't realise, I think, sometimes with the magazine is I'm happy to put in the magazine completely contradictory articles. So, you know, for instance, when Tabitha wrote the article about the food thing, you know, about food influencing, you know, people, I would have been really happy, and well, you might not have been, but I would have been really happy to have had another piece next to it, completely arguing the opposite. Because one of my things that I would love to see and I would buy it if it was a real thing done well, is a newspaper that had a left-wing point of view next to a right-wing point of view, and, you know, with no uh, concessions made either way, so you can make your own mind up as to what you think. I know there is a website that claims to do it, but it's um, it's it's not really that good, to be honest. I did have a look at it. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, this is an ad for Issue 16, so I've really... Um, planned well ahead right through to the end of the year and this is dog days now this is likely to be the magazine issue that i'll probably be standing out of i'll probably not be doing much for this issue if that's if i can find people so write your anti-neil articles for this issue because he won't see it <laughs> yeah all your anti-men all your uh <laughs> man hating white man hating articles <laughs> put them in this one yeah all your um anti british stuff put all that in this issue as well <laughs> yeah cuz I, I don't know how involved i will be or not in this issue and it does depend on whether uh, anyone's willing to um, step up and and do the, to be honest there's there wouldn't be much to do it's not like you would have to do much cuz um it would it was just that i wouldn't be, i won't write any articles for that issue or if i do i'm going to be doing it well in advance you know i'm just because I, I don't know why, but the, during the summer, I think it's because of the heat. I'm just not very good with heat. Um, I just don't want to do anything. I can't, I've got no creativity at all during the summer. And, you know, I can't write, I can't draw, I can't, I can knit, but I can't knit much, you know. It's weird. So I'm kind of planning ahead for that. And, and it's also a good uh, opportunity for other people just to have a bit of fun with it, because literally they will be able to do whatever they want with that issue, you know amongst themselves they're going to have to you know agree amongst themselves because it won't just be one person um what so, kind of so dog days of summer yeah like i'm trying to think of what well it literally could be to do with dogs it could do, to do with the summer it can be do to do with days it can do with that film dog day afternoon it can be which is a great film by the way if you haven't seen it 1974 i think it was with um is it al pacino um is that like reservoir dog not reservoir is it dog which is the one of the 
It's not Goodfellas. It's a mafia movie, right? Um, not really. It's um, ca- only in the sense that the two main actors were then in Godfather. Okay. So you know the one. I love who that was movie, with, by the way. Uh, the other guy is the one who was with Meryl Streep, who, and he died of cancer years ago in the seventies. He was in, um, I think, he was in the Deer Hunter as well. I can't think of his name. He was the one in the Godfather that they executed on the boat. I forgot. I can't think of his name. Now, the weird-looking guy, but he's in it. And the story is, it's two blokes in New York, and they have to rob this bank for reasons. And it's a really hot, sweltering day. Is that based on a true story? And they have like is. the old. I've seen it. I know that one. It it is such a good film. I love that film. Um, and like they're like uh, nice to the people robbing them. <laughs> and they all love him in the end. They're all like <laughs> yeah. cheering him on to win. <laughs> I've yeah. seen that movie. Okay. And it's quite uh, it's so ahead of its time with the theme, the underlying theme of it, and it's kind of like wow, you know, because basically the the whole premise of it is that he's trying to steal enough money for his boyfriend to have a sex change. But he's married, and he's not really gay. Or is he gay? You know, there's a whole, is he or isn't he? Because he doesn't want to be with this guy, obviously, as a, a man, presumably. But, yeah, um, yeah, the couple of people have seen it. It's, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a bank robber movie. It, but also, what's great about, I love movies where you get that real sense of feeling, you know, and it's hot, and it's sweaty, and it's stifling, and you know what kind of a day it is. You know, you know how horrible it is. And all the people are sweaty in the foot. You can see this and it's horrible. You know, it stinks, you know, of sweat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just so well done. Um, and he's, uh, he's, and he's brilliant in it. Al Pacino, it is Al Pacino, isn't it? Yeah. Al Pacino is absolutely brilliant in it. Um, Anyway, enough of that. So, dog days. Yeah, so um, anything to do with dogs, anything to do with days, anything to do with sons. Even one of the things I was thinking of was, uh, what do they call them? Dog, um, sun dogs. You know, I was thinking anything design-wise you could think of to do with that. But but as with all of these, you can use it or not. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> then, oh, Liz did a, um, a cute pattern here. She did the murder in its cowl. So yet again, another Tabitha reference. It's like every other page. Ah, although it was the murder <laughs> issue, wasn't it? So to be fair. Um, have you knitted this yet? Have you? Did you test it? I've knitted the cable pattern, but I have not knitted the cowl. But I've done the cable pattern. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, she, um, she's, fa- she's fast at designing, isn't she, Liz? Or is it this just is the same- that it's that way? Well, no, she is bad, but the cable pattern is from my Murder Knits um, bathrobe sweater, and she said um, a hat and a cowl and the sweater. Right, that's why it was so fast. Yeah, so she already had the hard bit done, didn't she? Yeah. Um, yeah. So knit that, that's good. Um, and then on here, I love this. I did, um, I've been doing these little articles from news archives, because uh, I subscribe to the British news archives. And I just do a search every issue that's kind of related to whatever the theme is. So I did a search for knitting and murder. And these were what came up. And um, I won't talk about these ones here because these, well, this one at the bottom I thought was quite weird because it's almost like nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. So a knitting needle, knitting needle in heart man unchanged. Now, I don't know whether American headlines are the same as British, but headlines here do not make sense grammatically. They just do not make sense. Um, and so anyway, Anthony Reagan sentenced to life imprisonment at the Old Bailey in September for stabbing his wife to death was today still in the sick bay at Wandsworth Prison, London, where he was taken yesterday after being found with a knitting needle sticking in his heart, as you do. Uh, no change in his condition was reported today. And that's it. It's like, the, I have so many questions I want to know, you know. <laughs> One, how did a knitting needle get into prison? Were they allowed to knit? Or was it because I thought it was just crochet you were allowed to do? Two, did he do it himself? Did somebody do it to him? What, why, how, you know? What? Unless he's really using higher, higher sharps, that's a lot of force to get the knitting needle to go into him. In 1962 as well. So how, how sharp were the needles in 90s? Because higher, higher wouldn't yeah. have been around then, would they? Or were they? I don't know. Um yeah, so Texas Sheep Lady, what? The man was stabbed in prison? Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't feel sorry for him too much because he murdered his wife by stabbing her. So it's kind of like, you know, live by, live by the knitting needle, die by the knitting needle. You know, <laughs> but, and then the other one that I loved is actually, he was in a British newspaper, but it's a New York, well, a New Jersey story. And um, the headline for this is, she kept on knitting New Jersey woman foils armed bandits. So Camden, New Jersey. By calmly going on knitting when three masked and armed bandits shouted, Hands up! A woman here has saved £14 cash and a £70 diamond ring. So they must have converted it to British pounds because it's an American story. But So how they knew that figure, I don't know. She is Mrs. Mary Glowski, the wife of a local baker. She was sitting in the bakery when the attack was made uh, with the cash and the ring on her lap. Her husband was checking the week's receipts. I'll shoot, announced one of the robbers. Then you'll be charged with murder as well as robbery, she calmly replied. <laughs> another Sounds of like the men, me. yeah, another <laughs> of the men then suggested that a hasty retreat was preferable to arguing with a woman who went on knitting in the face of a holdup. So they all fled. After they had gone, Mrs. Glowski fainted. <laughs> Just I just got this image of what this woman was like, you know. <laughs> so obviously she was absolutely shitting herself at the same time. Yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like I love the fact that they had that conversation as well. You know, <laughs> somebody will carry on knitting. Oh, we're not going to mess with them. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know. Um, to every issue, I try and find a link. I'm not finding much for. Um, uh, the next issue, so they might not have any in the next issue because it's uh, it's tr it's difficult. If I look for bare arms in a knitting archive, none of it ends up being knitting related, and it's all um, to do with bearing arms. You know what I mean? So, and I don't know how interested people will be in that, especially with it being English news mainly. Um, oh, here's our issue seventeen ad, and this is Fall Y'all, uh, which I keep hearing at the moment because I think somebody's doing some knitting thing called Fall Y'all, aren't they? I don't know who it is, but luckily I got this in there before they did, so they're copying me. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other side, dun dun dun. I you love this. You tell by us. The way. You like what? I love. I love the layout that you did for it. Well, to be fair, this was BS Designs who did this. It wasn't me. She did. Oh, the layout, good job, so. BS. You have permission to do this for all my other patterns. <laughs> well, she does. She does all the layouts inside. So um, I, I do. Um, some bits to do with like i didn't do the text on that one i do some of the text but um she did all of that one she did do a good job i like the way she um used all three of your pictures as well yeah and made it work so because mm -hmm. it even flows in it doesn't it? it's almost like the the tree at the bottom picture left there is becomes the ground where you stood on and the one above so tell us about what you're wearing here tabitha what's well, going on i'm closed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm wearing clothes. I don't know. It's my shawl, and I'm out in the woods, and it's raining, and it's cold, and my husband was fed up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Can you tell that on your face? It looks like in this one at the top. Actually, no, the one in the square there, the one like the photograph. Oops. The one like the photograph. It looks like he's really just told you off, like, Can you keep still? Or something like that. No, you know? <laughs> no. So that was the first one that we did, and he kept making me laugh, and I'm like, I have to be serious. And he's like, kept making, and I kept laughing. And so I'm like, well, just take the goddamn picture. We were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so did it do the marriage good, or is it worse since? Was it? <laughs> no, it's it good now. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing jobs together isn't always a good thing, is it? <laughs> uh, right. So that's oh, so the Morticia shawl is. Um, you do you have it there, or have you already has it been given away, or? It's over there. I don't want to get up. Okay, I think <laughs> I think people have seen. Anyway, there's a picture of it. There you can look at it there. <laughs> Any, you could. I knitted this with two skeins of DK weight, but it's like the murder knit shawl. Any size, any needle gauge, any yarn. You cast on and you just knit. That's all there is to it. We've had to even come up with a new phrase for these patterns because because um, tech editors are very, very hot on gauge and needle size. It's their <laughs> thing. like um, And so now we're having to do this thing where we just call it gauge-free. And even I'm starting to create patterns now that are gauge-free because <laughs> it's, like, easier, isn't it? It like... 
I'd love to. I'd love to figure out a murder dip style sweater, but I'm mm. not sure how to do that yet. Where you pick whatever. It would have to be go. oversized, wouldn't it? It would have to be oversized. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you could do a cardigan. I bet you could do a murder knits cardigan because then you could place the buttons where you want them to fit you or whatever, you know. Well, you could do pieces, you know, like do a piece style sweater where you knit the back however you want. Oh, what about a kimono? And then you can do appropriation as well. And then... Is that from Mulan? Kimono... <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about kimonos <laughs> is that they, um, they're they literally just knitted in panels, generally. And you piece the panels together. They don't seem at the front in any way, so they're like cardigans that are open, but they wrap over. So it's a little bit like your um, your dressing gown type like thing. That. Yeah, and the sleeves are huge, although there are different um, different things you can do. So so the sleeves aren't tight in any way. So <sighs> it is. Some, I've I've got a um, I've got some kimono uh, patterns that I'll show you, and then you'll know what I mean. Um, but you will get accused of culturally appropriating because, you know. You think I give a shit? <laughs> well, we could do a kimono issue, couldn't we? We could do one next year and have a whole Japanese issue. Yeah, we could do a turning. <laughs> we could do a. <laughs> We're turning Japanese article. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you really want us to get hung, don't you? You know, they'd go for us big style. <laughs> you could have that song, turning Japanese issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> anyways okay ah you're here again look she's on this page as well it's like we need to count how many pages she isn't on <laughs> um so uh, i've cut down on who we advertise uh, in terms of podcasts and things like that because it was starting to get a little bit uh unwieldy if that's the right word um and we we weren't sure who actually wanted to be in the magazine and who didn't so I've cut it down to the bare minimum. So if you're not on the list and you want to be on the list, then give me a don't ask say give me a call, drop me a line on an email or in the messages, and we'll have a chat about it. Uh, then we've got um, Mommy Dreary, and she wrote an article in um, to go along with a pattern that I designed, which you'll see in a second. It's called Mrs. Peacock in the Kitchen with the Sharpie. So she did the uh, test knit for, well, one of the test knits for my weapon of choice or clue dough cowl. So for those that don't know, we call it, we invented this game and we call it clue dough. <laughs> but because Americans, they didn't think <laughs> Americans could understand the word clue dough, they took the D and O off it and called it clue for some bizarre reason. Don't know why. Anyway, so, um, so I did a, um, a design based on um, the motifs from, the game and when she knitted it so there was a, a I have with the if you look on the picture that you can see there you if you look where the players are they look like pawns on chess but they're the players in the game and I wanted them all to be the different colors of the players as they appear to be here and um, I did two designs one was where you started off knitting the players sideways so that you could keep changing the colour without having to do any kind of intarsia nonsense and then you picked up the cowl from the bottom and picked up again at the top to knit the rest of it but as I was sort of looking at it and I just thought it was too much messing for such a simple thing as a cowl you know what I mean it did it didn't it worked but I just thought I don't think because some people really don't like picking up stitches I do but I know other people don't so in the end I just decided to go with plain ones and I thought people can do what they want with that um so what um she did was she knitted it in I think they were knitted in white and then she colored them in with a sharpie like and did on her um <laughs> on her shawl and but part of it is because the the there's a there's a podcaster called The Knitting Man, I think he's called, or The Knitting Guy. And he's in Britain, and he does a whole thing about this where he colours in his knitting with Sharpies sometimes. He doesn't do it every time. But it kind of worked. I mean, it, they're very pale, but it did work. And so she wrote down how she did it and what she had to do because she had to prepare the uh, the knitted fabric first. I can't remember what she did. She soaked it in something, I think. Um, but anyway, so that was that. Um, that's the uh, the cowl. And these are the charts for it. And then Morgan also did a version. So if you look at Morgan's here, she did all of her players just in blue. 
uh, and she did the um, the weapons in green and the dice white. Whereas um, Mommy Drew, she did the dice in red. She coloured in the characters, um, and uh, she also. I don't know how well you can see it here, but she also had some fabric that matched it. So she decided, it isn't in the pattern, but she decided to line the cowl. And it, she just made a really good job of it. And um, it was, it's, a lot of people liked it. It's just a fun design, isn't it? And people, I think people recognize what it is. Oh, I had to make up the poison bottle. There isn't a poison bottle in the game, but I felt I like, like that. it needed that, you know. And I like that. Yeah, there was like a big gap there, and it needed something. And I thought, oh, that'll work because it um, it just adds something else to it. I think so. This is the full chart here, but if you were making the pattern, you only have to follow the instructions here because the chart is broken down into more manageable bits. Um, and oh, yeah, and the other thing about this is that I've literally just only yesterday, I've done, um, I've converted this into a um, a one at the moment a one size sweater with a yoke design. And um, it's not got all of these elements in it because the yoke can only be so deep. Because um, I don't really want, I didn't really want to have it going right down into the body. I just wanted it to be around the yoke, really. So Tabitha might be able to test knit that at some point. So there's no, but that's for whenever. There's no, I don't think it'll ever be going in the magazine as a pattern. But if it does become something that I can grade up, I will release it if people want it, if the pattern works. Because the other thing is, it's kind of the first sweater that I've um, designed with any kind of colour work on it. So I don't know. I'm not certain whether it will even work. I think it will, but um, we'll see. Anyway, waffling on. So now we have the murder mystery crossword. Um, yeah, because everything, the theme for this was murder mystery, by the way. And we had um, D. Marie Prokop wrote uh, a piece of fiction as well, um, which is a murder mystery. And uh, it's quite, it's very good, actually. And uh, then the other thing, this had nothing to do with murder mystery at all. So I don't know, uh, it probably would have been, oh, then again, China, it's not Japan, is it? I was going to say it could have gone into our future uh, turning Japanese <laughs> issue, um, but it's not, it's China. So this was just something that came up because I was knitting, I don't know whether anyone saw it, but when I was on knit night quite a few weeks ago, I'd knitted a green baby bonnet and it was the Tin Can Knits Beloved bonnet because we were supposed to both be wearing this bonnet. <laughs> I started it, it's over there, I started it. <laughs> And I Gosh. knitted it in green just because. <laughs> and then I remembered um, something that happened. I used to have lodgers that lived here. And um, he was from South America. And his wife, she didn't live here at the time. But she was in China. And she was moving to the UK. And they'd been married about 10. Well, no, they'd known each other 10 years. I can't remember how long they'd been married. So she was coming over. And anyway, she came over. And she lived here as well with us for a while. And then um, he asked me one day to if he could have a piece of knitting for his mother-in-law they were going back to china for a break and uh, he wanted to take her a hat and i'd literally just finished a beanie hat that was green and he said oh that's great and i didn't have anybody you know i just knitted it it was just plain one there was nothing special about it so i said oh you can have this one if you want you know so he was really chuffed and um which means, you know, really happy if you don't know in America. And uh, he uh, took it to show his wife. And I'm not joking. I've never heard anything like She went crazy. And she was such a meek and mild, you know, placid person normally. So I was thinking, Christ, all my, because I could hear them rowing, you know, in the front room, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. Anyway, it turned out that green hats just are a no no in China. Absolute. <laughs> No way ever. You must not wear a green hat in China. And um, it, but it doesn't make sense to me because the idea is that if you wear a green hat, it means that your partner is having an affair. So I kept saying, but why would you wear a green hat if your partner was having an affair? Why would you do that? You know, it's like it doesn't make sense, does it? You you wouldn't yeah. want people to know. And but it, so there's like there's no um sort of rhyme or reason to it. So uh, anyway, there's a few um Nobody knows for certain where it comes from, but there's a couple, maybe two or three um, stories behind it. So I wrote about it here, and it is quite interesting. So what I would say is take it seriously, this, because when I say take it seriously, I mean Chinese people take it seriously. You know, if you went to China wearing a green hat, you would literally be pointed at and laughed at. And you might not know why. they And they'd be quite rude about it. And they probably wouldn't want to talk to you or go near you or anything. And um, 
because part of the thing is it's about prostitution as well. So one of the theories is that um, in a certain era in China, if you were a prostitute, not only you, but your in entire family had to wear green hats so that everybody else could avoid you because you were like the, the scum of the earth. But also uh, one of the other things I found out, which I didn't know, is you know like well, we I say... Or go to them for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, looking for the green hat in the crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what if you found the dad? Because the dad would have to wear a green hat as well, you know, or the granny, you know what I mean? It's sort of uh, it's a bit oh, shit, isn't it? But um, so in the West, we call prostitution areas red light districts, whereas in the East, they call it the Green Lantern District. So green has a slight association with prostitution. Although the colour green in itself isn't a problem. You can wear green clothes. It's only hats and headwear that you mustn't wear. So even a headscarf you wouldn't be able to get away with wearing. The only people that are allowed to wear green hats are people in the military if the military uniform is green. And it's kind of like, well, hmm, why didn't it spread to them as well? They're probably the ones most likely to be using prostitutes, to be fair. But there you go. So anyway, I thought it was quite interesting that, you know, culturally things are so strange. And I don't think we... Do we have anything like that? Do we have any kind of comparable thing? Sandals with if socks? The clothes are on the, if, if the clothes were on the front lawn, it usually means there's a cheater, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, as in thrown out the door or thrown out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard the, um, oh, what's the one? Is it something grass? Something, is that plant that's fluffy? Um, if you put, does it begin with P? Something grass in your front lawn, that means you're a swinger. I've heard that. So if you see it, you're supposed to go and knock on the door and, and you know, invite yourself in. No. <laughs> so I don't know. Um <laughs> Okay, oh, bloody hell, even more <laughs> Tabitha shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, so... Damn Paisley. <laughs> yeah, uh, we finally got around to putting in the Murder Nick show because I think it's, it almost became an urban legend that Murder Nick show I was in the magazine. I thought it was in the magazine, was it not? <laughs> I don't think it's ever I been. Gave it, no. I gave it to you, like, the first episode or issue, I thought. Yeah, it's been, I think what it is, I think I've been hanging on to it. Because if you remember, I was doing those uh, shawl shape things. Oh. Do you remember? And I, and I realized I don't need to do it because you're kind of doing it for me. Every, because <laughs> all the shawls you create are kind of those, you know, are from, you know, do that job for me, if you like. So I think I was just holding on to it for the right issue. And then when I knew the murder issue was coming up, I thought, well, it can go in there, not knowing that you were going to do the other <laughs> shawl as well. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, so it's a bit overkill of you this this month. But uh, <laughs> so if you don't like Tabitha, <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> it's a bit tough. <laughs> but great picture of Paisley there, by the way. That's a really cool picture. Um, I take so, it she claimed uh... that one. Yes, that's hers. The shawl on the top is a one skein DK weight shawl, the shawl I'm holding. And the shawl that Pays is holding is a one skein bulky weight. Wow. So you can kind of see same pattern, nice. different needle sizes, and different weights of yarn, but one skein. But Tabitha's gauge, so really loose. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so on the one for the Paisley one, is that big enough for an adult as well? It looks like it would be. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it I mean, is. it's. It would be like a handkerchief size for me, but it's a proper right. size for Paisley. Right. And then if you do it fingering, where obviously one skein of fingering is going to be a really decent size, isn't it? Yeah. Paisley has stolen that one, and she has her dolls wrapped up in it. <laughs> <laughs> does that not annoy you, or does it not matter as long as it's getting? Used? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> oh, just going back to the uh, article about the green hats. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Uh, I think I don't know if that means anything to Americans, but yes. Um, what, oh, what's this about a date? Uh, he hasn't released the date yet. Uh, I don't know what that's about. I cannot see the chat, so you'll have to talk a bunch of shit about me, and I would not know. Uh, oh, it's to do with this. The the great Neil talk. <laughs> so it's like, when's it happening? Yeah, I don't really know. It's going to be uh, 
nearer to winter. Whatever happens, it's going to be one side of winter. It's not going to be in the summer. I won't be able to uh, cope. Um, anyway, so uh, this is our usual advert for submissions. And then it's the end of the magazine. So um, so that was the Tabitha issue. In fact, it should have, shouldn't have been murder mystery. It should have just been Tabitha, shouldn't it? <laughs> I feel so, bad. Like I took the spotlight away from Anne or um, Amy and her wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it's good though, isn't it? But uh, um, I think um, obviously we're not going to have you on the next cover because that would just be too much, wouldn't it? But uh, Christmas is yeah. fine. <laughs> well, I thought it'd be cool. Like if we had it, like I was turned away and you had my sweater flowing in the background. It was like Carol Baskin esque. <laughs> I don't know. Well, are you going to do you want me to post you the uh, the mullet wig for Tom to wear? <laughs> oh my God. So he could be um, what's he called, Tiger King? I don't know if he'd do that or not. <laughs> Would he uh, bleach his beard? No, <laughs> it is turning grey, but he won't bleach it. Well, you could get whaling on, couldn't you? Just dye whaling's hair blonde because he has a mullet, doesn't he? Or he did. <laughs> well, his hair is already blonde, so. There you go. You've got your little Tiger King as well. So if you have Waylon and a pussycat right in the front of the frame and then have you oh further God. back, it all... <laughs> I can't imagine you've been able to get Waylon to sit still long enough. No. No. Oh, no. Um... oh wrong one. Uh, do the mullet wig and the Santa ensemble for December. Well, I'm not doing... I, don't... I won't do the Santa thing again because I've done it once. So uh, otherwise, it would... I could just use the same photo every... December issue, couldn't I? But no. Um, uh, what else? Oh, BS is just popping in. Um, so BS is the one we were just talking about who does all the layouts for the magazine. She works really hard on it, actually. I always feel really sorry for her because um, the rest of us on the magazine kind of have six weeks, more or less. And then usually we have about two weeks of being really busy. And then BS literally has about three days where she's non-stop <laughs> you know, shit hitting the fan, you know, and then we have to keep saying, no, we need that change and we need that change. You know, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And she gets everything perfect. And then there'll be one word that needs changing and it throws all of the formatting out, you know, and it's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, and she's doing her day job at the same time and running a restaurant as well. So I don't know how she all man how she manages it. Um... <laughs> ah, yeah, I'd like to have one with all the elves in, definitely. <laughs> And she's, uh, I still love you guys. <laughs> well, you might not do after the next issue because <laughs> with, uh, I don't know, well, we'll go into that another day. So what else have we got to talk about? So we have the, has there been any scandal? Not really. There's been a little bit on Craft Snark about the new uh, mystery knit-along. What's her name? <laughs> Helen Stewart's doing. Oh, God. It's not a swastical, is it? No. It's funny because... She's doing a mystery knit along, and people were complaining that it's a pie shawl. And people on Craft Snark are like, "It's a mystery knit along. It's supposed to be a mystery. You're just supposed to knit it." And I'm like, "Where the fuck were you when Stephen West was doing his?" <laughs> yeah, are they new? Are they new to the game? They clearly haven't been Gosh. around long, have they? <laughs> oh, so was it that they were annoyed that they said it was a pie shawl or were they annoyed that they didn't say it was a pie shawl? What was the... That, well, thing? she said it was a pie shawl and they were upset that it was a pie shawl. I don't know. I think Mr. West's mystery knit along kind of ruined it because it's allowed people to dictate what the knit is. Yeah, and that's, so it's, that is it's, the whole point, isn't it? You literally take yeah. your chances and or you just don't and wait and then if you like it when you see it done, then you do it. You know, it's... Well... Because he caved, yeah. other people are feel like they're entitled to demand other designers make changes if they don't like it either, for whatever reason. And it's ruined mystery knit-alongs, in my well, opinion. It's, it's ruining designing full stop. Because if you think like what the grocery girls were like recently over petite knits, where they got it really wrong over the whole yeah. you know sizing thing, they were demanding what they wanted her patterns to be. And it's like, well, no, the designer, unless you are, you know, commissioning a designer to make you a pattern, you know, that could be for sale wider, but, you know, you've got to pay for that. You don't have any right over what 
a pattern designer designs, you literally look at it. And if you don't like it, you don't purchase it or download it. And if you do like it, you purchase it or you download it, which, I've, you know, it's, I don't, yeah. I don't know any other kind of industry that is, is like, that has this. Well, I think it's, I was listening to a podcast yesterday when I was at work, part of my stash, and it was their newest one. And one of the knitters on there said that they will never buy a sweater design unless it has darts like it's fully customizable every single sweater and must have chest darts it must have increasing and decreasing for the waist and she's listing all these things that it must be for it to be a sweater design and if you don't do this you have no right to sell sweater designs and i'm like gosh i think number one i think people in the knitting community are chronically online and they have so much access to knitting designers that they think that they have the right to demand things of other people because they're all online together. Yeah. When you don't have that right, you don't have the right to come on to somebody and say, you must do this or you can't do that. Yeah, and there's a blurring, isn't there? Whereas once you would never necessarily even know who the designer was. You know, it would be, it would be printed by Rowan and you may or yeah. may not have had a name on it. And they would have been a little bit out of reach. They're not people that you could necessarily talk to. Whereas now it's all become very close, hasn't it? It's people that you're interacting with almost every day are the designers that you're buying from. Yeah. Sometimes, not always. And it's this yeah. weird relationship, like a very, it's a parasocial relationship, but it's a weird, like your person who designs your jeans and your clothes that you buy at Walmart or wherever, you don't have access to them. Yeah, yeah. You don't have access to make demands of people but for some reason, the knitting community thinks that they can demand things of other designers. And it's very, very weird. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the Stephen West thing, I mean, I know we've talked about the swastika over and over and over again in the past. <laughs> but just the the audacity of the whole thing. You know, I don't like that design. Therefore, you need to take it off the market and change it and demonize anybody that did like the original one you know it just the thought that you would never do that to anybody else under any other circumstances nope. just i'm nope. just putting some of the comments on here um yeah it's exactly you know you, if you've got a problem with uh make along uh, mystery make alongs just wait you know until um... well so helen released a half pie shawl they're 12 days of birds or whatever instead of the 24 days of birds. But it's like you guys are ruining designing, you oh, know. So they she changed. Design. So she did that she because helped. of the complaint. Yep. <sighs> but it's funny because people are upset because they bought the first one. And if they want to do the half pie, they have to buy the new pattern. And they're pissed about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You can't win, can you? I suppose, though. See, I suppose. See, again, we can compare this directly with the Stephen Weston, can't we? See, I think maybe what she should have done is, um, one, told them to fuck off and not done anything. But if she is going to change it, then that ha I'm sure that really should be part of the original thing and it becomes a second option that you've already paid for. You know, I don't know. Out. If you're stupid enough to complain about a pattern you bought a mystery knit-along that was marketed <laughs> as a mystery knit-along... And you're dumb enough. Pay her the next eight dollars. And, and also, I mean, I, I don't know. There's going to be somebody probably listening that can't do this and will take offence. But I think if you can knit a pie shawl, you can work out how to do a half pie shawl. You know, write it by two and stop, and then turn your work and go back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not rocket science, <laughs> although. I mean, I but I do concede some people won't know to do that. But it isn't, you know. Well, then maybe that's not thing. for you. Not everything. This is the thing that kills me. Is not everything is for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Not, and it doesn't have to be for everybody. Not <laughs> Actually, everything. Yeah. yeah, chicken and shit says make them pay for their whinging. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I should have charged for the uh, amendments I made to my <laughs> my show. <laughs> No, but that's different. There was actually a mistake in the shawl. That's a different matter, isn't it? If you'd have, if you'd have been saying, "Oh, I don't like this particular shawl because of X," I think you know there's one too many claws, you know, in yeah. the design, and then insisted that's not, that's I change a you it. Thing. That that's would be, not a 
yeah yeah that's like well don't knit it then you know don't choose that pattern because it's not for you you're right <laughs> um do you know what this means charge a miser fee mm -mm. so uh yeah it's a it's a it's a northern english phrase mithering is uh like moaning oh. but, so kids mither their mums or their moms, as you would say, you know, it's like mom, 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 yeah. over nothing. That's mithering. Mithering is usually something really insignificant. Yeah, and if they don't like it, design your own. Exactly. Yeah, or just look for a pattern designer that you like and use their pat. You know, why go? I don't understand this. This sort of instant attack for something that doesn't need. I think sometimes on that craft snack site, they're literally trying to think of things to post because there's nothing happened and they have to yeah. make up something. Because some of the things I've seen on there, you just think, what? Really? That's a problem? When some of the real problems that are going on, you know, that they ignore. Um, yeah. Oh, because one, one of the... Oh, go on. Sorry. Uh, well, I just think that they're so online. I don't know. The knitting community is so online that they don't knit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we need to have um, like one day a week where that's the day where we all do social media. The only day of the week. The rest of the week, get knitting. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Now, what was that? What was no, I about no, to say, good. Tabitha? <laughs> it's probably know. a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, Craft Snack. Yeah, because I didn't read much of that. Um, but the one I did read a little bit more about was um, they're going for some sewing uh, person, must be on YouTube. And she's been bragging a little bit, apparently, that she's doing really well with her sewing business. But now she's doing a, um, a GoFundMe and it's for something personal. I think it's for a car. I think it was. I might yeah. be wrong on that. Was it? Wasn't was it a car accident? Oh, was it? Ah, right. Ah, I might be. Yeah. So basically, it was personal. It wasn't business related. And they're really going for her on uh, Crafts Night, you know, saying, you know, she can't be doing that well, blah, blah, blah. And it's really bad, you know. And it's like, imagine she's clearly not black. Because what was she? She was an Asian. I think you said she was, wasn't she? I, I thought she was so. white. Yeah. But, um, and they're going for a big time. But if it had been, you know, a black knitter, they would not have said a word. And it's like, well, why the double standards? Why is it okay for one race of people to be able to do that, but not another? I mean, I am so tempted to set up a GoFundMe just for the hell of it, for something, you know, make, for the trip to America, <laughs> you know, and advertise it somewhere where the Wokies will see it, just to see what they would say about me for doing it. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you can imagine it, can't you? They wouldn't. There's no way, you know, because when we think, I won't even say a name, but when we think of one of our favorite um, yarn dyers, who uh, I mention a lot, so I'm not going to say a name anymore, but she has literally done GoFundMe and begging for her stepson's graduation, uh, for her daughter's teacher, because she said something nice to her one day, uh, for... Um, what else? Is she, uh, well, just for a hundred thousand pounds for just because. Uh, what else was she crowdfunded for? Um, there's loads of stuff, and it's like ridiculous the things that she does and gets away with it, and nobody ever questions it. Whereas this one woman who's doing this fund I mean, I don't agree with these fundraisers to be fair, but it's like, why has she been singled out? Rant over. <laughs> I, don't, I just. It makes me sad, you know, when I want to see what, like, people are going to go back on and, you know, look in the archives of what the knitting community is. And I'm just like, gosh, doesn't that make people sad? Like, <laughs> well, see, one of the things that I can't remember whether it was uh, Tara who said it. I can't remember. or whether I don't know who it was or Amy, but we were talking about the magazine and like what and kind of like in the future. And I think I think it was Tara that sort of said, you know, she had this. She what she would love that you know if in years to come, like in a hundred years time or whatever, that they found Blocked magazine and read it, <laughs> and like 
saw how fantastic it is and then also saw all the madness that had been going on about it, you know. Because <laughs> obviously we, you know, in the magazine we talk about everything from a different perspective that will have been out yeah. there elsewhere. And I and I, I think it was that. And I, and I kind of think about that myself quite a lot now because I think, do you know what, it's going to be... Um, have you heard about, there was that book called uh, The Book of Dave. Have you heard about it? Mm-mm. Um, it was by this weird guy called Will Self. And it's a little bit of a, um, a critique of religion, so you might not like it. But basically, it's set in the future, and there's been some ap- apocalyptic disaster of some kind. And they find a taxi driver's diary from like our era, and they use it as a Bible. So you know how taxi drivers <laughs> kind of have this kind of wisdom. The wi- oh wow, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> Biden books, <laughs> but thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, next time send what? What is good books? Who's who's got a good Chinese Chinese funds? Like they're rich at the moment, aren't they? Um, yeah. So the so I just think you know, Block Magazine could be like. The blocked Bible in two hundred years, where everything in it. <laughs> the is. book of Neil, <laughs> and then it'll be Tabitha. Are you going to be? You'd be like the uh, Mary Magdalene <laughs> character, wouldn't you? Wearing red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh, if I like would, that. <laughs> who would be Judas? Maybe Judas will be appearing in the future at some point. <laughs> Lola Bean. <laughs> well, no, wouldn't she be like the? She'd be the devil tempting people wouldn't she oh she's a pharisee and emma be judas (laughs) (laughs) oh anyway so what else should we talk about is there anything else i think we've covered everything we intended to cover i think haven't we i don't know do you have any okay i have a question do you have what are your yarn buying intentions for the rest of the year oh that's a good question that is a good question um (laughs) I'm a little bit obsessed at the moment with, um, oh, what are they called? Jameson. Is it Jameson's or is it Jameson's and Black? It's Jameson's. So I showed that really big uh, cone of yarn yesterday. So I've been, I bought one. So it should have been £73, which sounds like a lot. So what's that? Is that $90 maybe, $80, $90? Um, But it's 4,000 metres. So I think that's a bargain myself. It's... um, two-ply sweater weight no two-ply jumper weight is called so it's fingering or like i think it's a heavy fingering um and it's i'm crocheting with it at the moment and it is so nice to work with but it feels a little bit crunchy at the moment because it's got all of the oils are still in it so it has to be washed so i'm I'm quite excited to see how it's good not excited but you know what i mean i'm anticipating how it's going to wash but i'm looking and i think do you know what i'm tempted to every month not every month every other month buy a cone of each of the colors that i would knit something with because that is color work for forever isn't it you know that amount of yarn although i've got enough yarn for color i don't know i've got enough yarn anyway that i'm never going to be able to knit it all but the other thing i'm thinking of doing is i'm seriously thinking of getting rid of the shit yarn that i bought at the beginning that i still have you know, the yeah. stuff that I'm never, ever, ever going to knit with. And I just think, why am I keeping that shit? You know, um, I don't know why I'm keeping it. I just feel like it's a waste of money. But I think I'm going to either give it away to some knitting group somewhere, like at the library or something, or get rid of it. Because it's, I don't know about, well, we all know about Tabitha's infamous um, stash. <laughs> I'm going to have to show my stash at some point when I when I've got a room that I can present it in. Because I've yeah. got a bloody lot as well, more than I need. Um, but I think I've got to get on top of it a little bit. And this is one of the reasons why I bought this uh, knitting machine as well, because I thought some of the shit that I've got, I'm just going to play around with the knitting machine with it. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but I thought it'll just be yeah. used then. And it's kind of something that I can choose a scarf maybe with it or whatever. But apart from that, knitting, you know, acquisition intentions, I don't really have any more at the moment. Yeah. So go on. What's yours? Ah, uh, well, I was watching I'm some not video. Yarn anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. That the yarn I show. This was well, that, minus the um, because I'm on the Euphoria's Knit Club. Oh yeah. I really like her colors, and um, so I'm doing her club right now for the moment. 
But apart from that, I haven't bought anything. But I was watching the podcast, and they're like three thousand dollar yard stash or like six thousand dollar yard stash. And my husband goes, "You should share how much your yard." I'm like, "No, because it's embarrassing." Number one, it's way more than that. Yeah. It could buy a house in New York City. <laughs> Gosh. Well, if I were to uh, add up. Go on, if you were to add up, I think I added up what was on your bed once and it wasn't even it wasn't even most of it. <laughs> no, and oh I tried to I'm trying to decide if you should use that photo or not for the bare arms magazine. <laughs> oh yeah. Well that's up to you. I will use it because it's a great photo. So that's up to you if you want to want to see I think we're I think we're I think we're safe for you to use it. But I've added up my yarn stash and I think I'm hit close to the twenty thousand dollar. Oh my god! Oh, that would pay for private school for one of the kids. Uh, no, <laughs> but that's over like five years. It's not like twenty grand last summer, and a, like a third of it is like I've gotten gift certificates from family. Like my um, Tom's grandparents would always get me like a large gift certificate for Christmas for yarn, and so that's a lot of it but i feel like if i publicly say that like if i have like a show on my youtube like twenty thousand dollar yard stash you know how much hate i would get <laughs> yeah well yeah well people have said oh she's showing off she's privileged wouldn't you? you'd have that you know and oh i don't know it's um the thing about the yarn thing though is somebody <laughs> said i don't know what it was but somebody said on one show it wasn't on i don't think it was on any of our shows but Yarn buying is a completely separate hobby to knitting. It's like we've got two hobbies. One is knitting. One is mm -hmm. buying the yarn. And that feeling you get when you buy yarn it oh my God. isn't matched. And I don't know whether anyone who doesn't buy yarn would ever understand it. Um, but I want to buy yarn every month. And it's like, but why? You know, and sometimes I'm really struggling for what I want to buy, but I kind of don't, I feel like I've missed out on something if I don't buy some every month. You... I think there's a lot of pressures from yarn dyers, especially mm. if you know them, to buy their yarn that comes out. And I've left Instagram. I'm hardly ever on Facebook, and I don't really check my email. <laughs> well, you can't now, can you? <laughs> no, I can't, but... <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like getting updates and stuff, I don't get a lot of anymore. But like I used to, I don't feel it anymore because I'm broke. But before, I would feel pressure if I don't. Yeah, my yarn collection is very well insured, but it sucks because like I have yarn that like this, this dyer, this is a murder knits colorway, and she doesn't dye anymore. So like, how do I insure that? You know, I'll never get it back again. Mm. Yeah, but, but, does, but yarn. So yarn from sort of like let's say um, uh, Tuscan Maria Tuscan. You know, someone who doesn't dye yarn anymore. Does their yarn become more valuable? That you know that's oh, out there. It. I don't know whether it does. Does it? And I think until that point, that yarn becomes a collectible item just for what it is in itself. I don't think you could probably ensure more more than what it cost you the first time around. Yeah. I know when I when we had a lot more disposable income and I was when I acquired most of my stash, my husband would say, I buy a case of beer, you buy a skin of yarn. Because it's you know, thirty dollars for a case of beer and thirty dollars for a skin of yarn. And he goes, I just drink what I buy. <laughs> you store it. <laughs> well in a way. And that's I mean, how we would that's how we would equal it out, because he would buy his beer. And I was like, well, if you are buying something that you want for fun, I should buy something. And he agreed to it. And so yeah. he would buy a case of beer. I'd buy a case of beer. Does yarn, I mean, this isn't something I've I've tested, but does yarn hold its value? So if you were to sell a skein of yarn, would you be able to sell it for the price you bought it for? I'm, I'm sure people do, but I could not because it's used. Like it's been in my stash. It's stash warm. You know, like some of it, yeah, it's got it's your in great condition in there and the fluff off the cat or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But like this yeah. is over five years old. Oh, that's nice. And I could not, I paid $32 for it five years ago. There's no way in hell. I mean, it's all, it's starting to 
pill, which is normal for yarn. I mean, it's easy to get fixed once you knit it up. But there's no way I could be like, here, pay me $32 for this yarn that's been sitting in my stash for five years. See, that's the shame, isn't it? Because if it held its value, you you could call it an insurance. You know, you've, you're just swapping one currency for another. Yeah. You know, um, and then you're not actually, wait, you're not wasting money. But then if it loses value, then you kind of, you know, because... Yeah, because how many skeins have you got that you don't even like? Because that's what I think about. Because I do have skeins of yarn that now I don't like. So, Not a lot, but there are some. There's actually very few that I don't like. All the yarn that I've bought myself, I like. And I've bought it because I either have a project in mind or I like the color. My issue is when am I going to knit it? Good question. You know. So <laughs> he drunk twenty thousand in beer. <laughs> well, so he goes through like a case of beer a week. That's thirty dollars. Thirty times fifty-two. <laughs> wow. Well, somebody pointed out earlier. I'll see if I can find it. They said that now um, you're talking thirty-five dollars. I think they said for yarn. So maybe you need to renegotiate that. Well, so now he's still. Now I don't buy any yarn. I mean, which is a lie. But <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> I'm not doing the whole once a week buying a skin of hand dyed yarn. Once a month, I will have a package from Euphoria coming. Um, but he's still buying. He's on a beer budget. He gets X amount of dollars a month out of our budget. And that's his beer, his chew money, and his gas money. And whether he spends it or not, that's on him. But that's mm. so he knows I only have, you know, 100 bucks for two weeks. And that has to cover my beer and my chew and cash. And once it's gone, it's gone. Because our budget has seriously, between inflation and hours being cut, we're on a very tight budget. We still like to, for the most part, say, okay, you still have fun money. It's just cut drastically down and like when it's hunting season he has to stockpile his cash for his gas because he uses more gas during hunting season than the other time so he still has his fun money it's very short and i still have my yarn fun money but it's very it's very i'm not buying yarn quant yarn sweater quantities anymore at all i haven't right. bought well i bought that fucking ugly cat shawl you are <laughs> <laughs> oh try and make me feel bad <laughs> yeah, no. the children aren't going to eat this month just because of the ugly cat show. <laughs> no. no, I would never. I would. I would never put my children at a detriment. But I am not buying. I mean, this was the last yarn I bought, minus the yarn club. Well, that, that yarn you bought in the box for the shawl. I. I this mm -hmm. is how. This is how much of a bloody sucker I am. I immediately went on the website to look at it because I wanted it. <laughs> And then, but then the next day, I'd kind of moved on. It was like, no, I don't actually need it. And I think that's a lot of the problem, isn't it? It's that we're seeing we're seeing these things on our screens. And oh, like, oh my god, I want that. And this is I only there. I only bought this because of fucking Amy. <laughs> I hate cotton, and I hate that it's threaded. I still bought three skeins of it, <laughs> even though she won't knit with it. She's crocheting with it. You still bought it. <laughs> Yeah, why are we so, why, you know, it's like the magpie thing, isn't it? The new shiny thing that we all want. Um, we, we have to stop doing it, really. Although people like Chicken Lady would be saying, no, you need to keep doing it, you know. Well, you know, so if you're not well, buying sweater quantities anymore, is no. that because you don't have any particular sweater in mind to knit anymore? Or is it? No. So I have, I have, there are sweaters I want to knit, but I already have the yarn. And I need to use the yarn I have. I've run out of yarn in my stash. I've got a ton of South Lander that I've bought, and I already know what sweaters I'm going to knit, but I haven't had the time to knit them. Yeah. Well, they don't. Does she? Do they do South Lander at skeins anymore? No, they they still do, but they don't do the the really big no, that, skeins, do they? No, and this is the really big skein, the 200 meters. They right. just do 100 meter ones, but I, this is old, old. Yeah. But. 
because I've been doing that now. Now I do buy sweater quantities of uh, yarn, <laughs> but I don't tend to knit sweaters. I'm not a sweater knitter generally, although I, I'm, I really want to start doing it. But what my thing is, I've decided I am not going to knit a sweater in the round in my size because it's just that is just pisses me off. It's just too many stitches put around. So I just think, no, I'm going back to old fashioned construction and I'm going to seam everything. Um, which means it makes it harder to find sweaters, modern sweaters, because people just seem to do in the round now, don't they? I mean, some people do, yeah. but there aren't many of them. Um, which is why I kind of like um, our friend um, James. James. Oh, Watt. Mr. Watt. He had a new podcast out the other day. Did you see it? Yes, I did. Oh, I felt so sorry when he cried over his cat. Oh, it was like, oh. I would, you know, I'd I love like him. Um, yeah, he his patterns, they're mostly seamed. Not all, I don't think, but his sweaters are seamed, aren't they? And I wonder whether that's because he was big, because he probably didn't want to knit them all in the round himself, for, you know, mm -hmm. for his size. Yeah, um, yeah, he's he's an interesting guy. I know I didn't like him at first, but I can't he's grown on me because I think, do you know what? He's actually all right. He can, and I can imagine you on a podcast I with love him. I love he's, him. He's got a bit of that don't give a fuck about him that yeah. you've got. And I think it would work really well. You, we need to do a campaign to try and get you both on a show together. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no. I I don't I don't even think I have a sweater on the needles right now. I did I counted all my whips and I cleaned out my whip bags. I don't think I even have a I have blankets and shawls and socks. Oh. I don't have any sweaters. And I have, which is kind of kind of the opposite at the moment, because I've got the uh, the man boob cardigan, um, Gartamala or whatever it's called. I've got that thing I'm doing for my mum, which is crochet. And I've also I started a Tunisian crochet sweater, and that's oh, because I I was going to ask you about the Euphoria knit yarn. So I've been collecting the yarn. Collecting is that the right word? Um, I've been collecting her <laughs> yarn for um, maybe is it a year? I don't know. I can't remember now. But but I really like the yarn. But I don't know what I'm going to knit with it. And I'm just wondering whether I'm going to start separating them into sort of colour families and maybe using them for sweaters, but holding them double. And But not all of them are going to work because some are darker, some are lighter. But she tends to, some of the main skeins that she sends have a lot of light in them, don't they? They tend to be speckled, so they might work. I don't know. So do you, what do you do with yours? I mean, other than murder knit shawls, what do you make with your skeins? So, that well, like, I haven't. You no know, singles, if that's the right word. The um, the singles I would use probably in shawls. I would. I don't know what I'm going to do with the minis. You know what you could do? Like Crazy Sock Lady has like a scrappy mini blanket, like the Jelly Roll blanket, or like oh, the yeah. Miter Square. I could see myself doing a Jelly Roll blanket with the minis, and saving the shawls for the, the other skeins for shawls, or you know, something like that. What I found when Stephen West does his mystery knit along shawls, a lot of his shawls, I'll pull out my weird minis and I'll right. figure out what goes together and do a shawl from that. Like all the shawls I've made of his, it's never been a pack. Like I've, I've bought this yarn for the shawl, it's always pulled from my stash. Which is so, difficult to do though, isn't it, with his? Because he there's that whole run up where he shows you what kind of and they're nearly always four full skeins aren't they or five full skeins yeah. so to to figure out how to do it with minis do you just wing it oh do you do the mysteries though or do you wait until they're out before you start well i don't so like i don't use the minis for his shawls i would do the minis for like a scrappy blanket but like right. the full skeins i would say for the shawls like my beetlejuice shawl that was yarn single skein yarn for my stash that I pulled together. Right. So that's Speaking why I would say. Juice, have you seen they're doing a, uh, another one? Yes. Are you excited, or are you yes. dreading it in case it's woke? No, I love. No, I love it. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, it's got everyone. Everyone's in it as well, aren't they? Um, yeah. But they've got that girl. Is it Wednesday? That girl out of Wednesday. What is it? Her that's in it. No. Jenna. Jenny, I don't know. I think, um, yeah, they've got a new. So I'm, I'm assuming it's the thing, the the daughter's daughter must be in it. Because mm -hmm. didn't the um, Gina Davis won't be in it, would she? Because they died, didn't they? 
that no, uh, Winona is that Winona Ryder? Yeah, she'll be in it because she was the family were alive at the end, weren't they? Yeah, I think it was the couple that were dead, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, God, it's a long time since I've seen that film. <laughs> I have to rewatch it now. Um, yeah, so uh, so knitting and you, oh, you four units we were talking about, weren't we? Um, oh, yeah, so I started doing this Tunisian crochet sweater with um, some of her minis because it's um, oh, it's I'll have to put it on Instagram, but it's kind of done. You start at the neck, so it's um, it is going to be a in the round one, but with Tunisian crochet, it's easier than knitting in the round for some reason. I don't know why, but you do like everything's in little bands, so it's perfect for minis, except you've just got to hope that by the time you come round to the next set that the colours are going to work together because I haven't worked that, that out. I mean, I could plot it all out and make sure that, but I'm just winging it at the moment. Um, but I don't know whether I'll ever finish it because it's not, I don't know. I, I'm not 100% enjoying it. Because sometimes I just want to knit something plain. You know what I mean? I just want yeah. a sweater, you know, to wear. I don't necessarily, whereas that part of me that wants to do something different every time kind of takes over common sense and I end up, going for the weird design that probably would never wear you know <laughs> <clears throat> yeah we've all got I mean, a psychologist would have a field day with knitters wouldn't they you know if they looked at all the aspects of what we do as knitters um but I don't, let's see have we had any comments so let's see oh <laughs> it's easier to lose girth and stop knitting in the room <laughs> well that may be true, but what isn't true is keeping the girth <laughs> off and still being able to fit inside that sweater afterwards. So it's easy to lose weight. It's not easy to keep it off. So um... kind of why I'm not really knitting sweaters. I have a sweater. I'm doing the Carol Baskin sweater, and then I'm doing the James Watts. It's not really a sweater, though. It's more of a mm. dress. But I really don't want to knit any sweaters that I want to knit until I lose weight. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been thinking the same because I was thinking, oh, if I go to America, I've, I've got a year, I've got to lose some weight before I go, in case, I, is, it, is it an, the fat something or other, and you get an extra yeah. seat just because you're fat, yeah. but then somebody gets thrown off the plane. <laughs> I, I might have to do that, just say. What's it called? There's a funny name for it, isn't there? What do they call it? I don't know. I don't know. Fat tax. <laughs> yeah. I want to exercise but like, my I don't want to... I don't want to knit these sweaters when I'm actively losing weight, and then I have all these sweaters that I can't wear. So I'd much rather just not lose the weight and say I'm going to knit the sweater <laughs> once I lose the weight. Well, if you do the kimono idea, because you'll... <laughs> the thought of knitting a kimono was too much for them, wasn't it? She just went, yeah, if you, do the, if you do the kimono idea, then that is going to be something that would fit anyway, because it might be a one-size-fits-all like we were talking about earlier. You know? Now, what about if, well, I'm thinking easy. What if I did like two square, like knit two rectangles and just sew them where I want the armholes to be? Well, that's a drop shoulder, isn't it? That's pretty much what a drop shoulder is. But then it's um, open, you know, and you'd have oh, to work so, it so for other people. And then you just say, you then sew it up to where it fits your arms. Yeah. And then pick up and knit your sleeves from there. I would do no sleeves. It would oh, be right. like just like a like a pon like not a poncho, but like a I don't know. I see fat old ladies work like a moo moo. <laughs> the bird and its moo moo. Yes. <laughs> well, I've done that design for um it was the one that Morgan uh, had to give up on because she just didn't have the headspace for it. But I've done a poncho design that would pretty much work for that. But the idea you don't seam it though, but you could. But the but the width of it is enough that it will hang down, so it looks like you've got sleeves, even though you haven't got sleeves. So you okay. could. So, so it, that idea would work. The only thing you you suppose you'd have to think about is the neck, isn't it? And whether how how. But then, if you say it's two two rectangles, you would do the same for the neck. But then, what would you do to finish it off? You know, because you'd do the same as your arms, wouldn't you? You would sew as much as neck as yeah, you need. I would just have it, size, you know, only sew until you what size you want. Like, some people have wider shoulders, so they would need to sew more. And some people have narrow shoulders, so they wouldn't. Or if they wanted, like, a wide neck, you know, like a boat mm -hmm. neck, they wouldn't sew. They'd have it more open. So if they, if they were going for, a, say, a crew neck look, how could you do it, though, so it looked? 
finished, you know, so that it because <laughs> what what <laughs> finished? <laughs> I'm just thinking that it might because you've got you know with the whole um, the neck thing, you know, where now you need to I say now you know where you need it a little bit higher at the neck, don't you, for it to sit right? You and could you so, and then you would pick up, and if you wanted like a rib. You would, you know, you knit your two pieces and then you would sew where you want your shoulders to be. And then you could pick up that circle and you could either knit a turtleneck or a crew neck or just do a little finish. I think it'd work. I think yeah. it would work. So I think you should do it. I don't have any yarn <laughs> in my stash that would work. <laughs> You've got no yarn. No, she's got no yarn, people. <laughs> so you could. You could stripe it and use all different yarns. Well, I have a oh. lot of this stuff. Texas Sheep Lady says basically it's a kimono, what you're describing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this um, L says his tutorials go through the whole pattern, so I don't know why people buy the pattern. Is, is that James Watts? Does he do tutorials? Is I mean, no, I don't. No, I think Stephen West. Ah, right. Oh, okay. I've never seen a tutorial by James. No, I was just wondering. Is that I wasn't sure who she meant. But he doesn't talk about the numbers, though, does he? He doesn't say how many stitches. But you, a good knitter would be able to work it out, I think, if they tried. I think. Yeah. Well, I'm not a good knitter, so I need I need all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't? Okay, here's the thing then. So why don't we do your home sweet home? What's her face, Jessica Fletcher, as this sweater that you're talking about? Because it's color work. But if you're going to be seeming it anyway, and you just work out what the arm depths needed to be, how much of the top of that sweater has color work on it? It's the whole thing. All the sleeves ah. and the whole sweater's color work. Steaking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, she was talking about Stephen West, and she says, yes, he does put the stitch counts in the... All ah, right, okay. Hmm. Well, I've wasted my money with his pants. <laughs> 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 I don't think he's done the man boob sweater tutorial yet i don't think i think he only does the tutorials on his mystery knit along shells and they're good tutorials but it's not for the whole thing yeah i don't think he's i've never seen him do one well that gatamala one doesn't need a tutorial because it is just the simplest thing yeah. ever isn't it uh and uh, texas sheep lady says uh, three pieces like the old-fashioned weaving patterns which don't have any cuts oh i don't know what they are though um so three pieces, wouldn't it? Well, be mine would just be pieces? two because it would be unless he did the sleeves. But I would do mine no sleeves and just have the extra fluff hanging over. Oh, so she's talking here about here. she's talking about the kimonos. Yeah, oh. kimonos are three pieces. It's one on each side, isn't it? And then the back. And I think that's. And, but obviously, you do have sleeves as well. So, like the old-fashioned weaving pattern. So that might be how she how they did weaved kimonos i don't know i think that's what she's talking about i think um but yeah kimono is your easiest one because that will they will do a you know one size fits all type thing yeah hmm. and plus you get the uh the you know the anger of the left as well which is always a bonus when it comes to anything that we do <laughs> <laughs> so anything else to talk about or have we we've done two hours 14 I'm good. I'm over it. I'm done talking to you. <laughs> well, fuck off. <laughs> Do one. <laughs> now I'm trying to think if I've got uh, what other news. Oh yeah, so issue <coughs> issue 14 is going to be out uh, uh, beginning of May. Yeah, so the cutoff for submissions is April the 15th. The issue will be around May. Oh, that's the good thing. Cross stitch. We need to talk about cross stitch for a minute. Um, we're going to be having cross stitch in blocked from now on. And so I've done that thing where I've uh, learned to do something and now I'm designing. So I've literally gone from 
just doing one cross stitch in my life to now designing cross stitch and you're now a, a cross you're a cross stitch designer like i'm a knitwear designer you're now a cross stitch designer <laughs> yes and my designs are good i tell you they're good i don't give a shit what anyone says um i've done enough designs for cross stitch for every issue right through until 2025 and i've done a theme that i think well i think is brilliant the only person who's seen them is Therese. I don't know if Therese is still watching. Um, uh, she's seen one uh, and she's given me some, she gave me some advice on the first one because she is a cross stitcher. That, and it was, I was making them a little bit too complicated, but now they're. Um... <clears throat> ah, somebody said, can we have a link? Yeah, uh, there should be a link there on the screen now. I, I, I prepared for this. This episode, you should there. design a cross stitch chart of me with a yarn crown and you with a mullet putting us together, and I'll cross stitch it and have it hanging <laughs> up for our shows. <laughs> right, okay, I shall work on that. That picture you sent me of you with your mullet that I still have saved <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> Not the naked one, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there isn't a naked one before anyone before the left <laughs> get onto that one. <laughs> You know what's um, funny is speaking of Joe, are you and your mullet? I was I made up a fake Facebook account so my husband could troll his friend who was selling things on Marketplace, and I used a Joe Exotic and a picture of Joe Exotic. I said, "Wait, I should use Neil Joe Exotic." <laughs> oh my god! So you are impersonating me to joke some God. I mean, <laughs> what's the word? I'm being catfished. <laughs> no, but the name is Phil McCracken. And it's a picture of Joe Exotic. And I was going to use your photo as Phil McCracken. But then I'm like, well, if Neil ever sees that, he's going to know it's me. If I'm the only one that has that photo. <laughs> oh, uh, have I not? Oh, right. I shall do that. I didn't know I hadn't done that. Sorry. Uh, in the about section. Right. I shall figure out how to do that. But uh, oh, the other thing I need to share as well is uh, the grift part. Join my Patreon. Um, so you don't can get, pay me. Yeah, you don't get much for that. But what you do get is a preview of the magazine each month, and um, and just the joy of knowing that you are <laughs> subsidising the magazine. Um, because without how, how does fruity knitting say it? Without it, we can't. It's a full-time job. That's what they say, isn't it? It's a full-time job for me and Madeline, or whoever is up, for me and the cats. And um, it uh, just helps us carry on. Without it, it would fold. I wouldn't be able to keep going without it. So thank you. It covers things like um, which hidden costs that you don't realise are there. So, for example, um, this stream yard that we're on now, I've just upped it to the next level. So I think it's $45 a month I pay per stream yard. There's the platform for the actual magazine to be on, so you get that paper turn. I mean, it's not essential to have that, but it just makes it look a bit nicer. Um, I can't remember how much that is, but that's uh, every year. That's an annual payment, so I have to save up for that as the year goes on. Um, and um, just other costs, like things like, you know, microphones and earpieces, you know, all those little things add up and you don't realise, you know. And also subscriptions to certain things for the magazine, like... Um, the news archive thing that I subscribe to. It's not a huge amount of money, but uh, little things like that. And also, it all, you don't realize it by the end of each month, it's actually come to quite a nice little amount. And you think, oh, shit. So um, that's why I do the Patreon. Otherwise, I couldn't afford to do it, basically. I would have to just downsize everything and we'd have nothing. <laughs> so there we go. So pay me, pay me everything you've got. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. Impersonating Neil, impersonating Joe. I did not do it. I was like, I could, but then if Neil would ever see it on Facebook, he'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I think. Oh, here we go. The stalker's back. <laughs> <laughs> then we find out Tabitha was the stalker all along. It's like you know <laughs> the unmasking. You know, in the... <laughs> we need Jessica Fletcher to unmask you. <laughs> so, on that note, so are we, are we done? Are we finished for today? Do you think? Yes. <laughs> okay. So um just let me think what have I got to mention anything? Uh yeah, watch Knit Night Mondays, watch uh, Knitting Wars Tuesdays, watch Murder Knits when she's on. She's just done one, haven't you, recently? So I don't know mm -hmm. when your next one's going to be. 
Um, oh, I've got two interviews lined up, three interviews lined up. Um, they're going to be not next month, the month after, I think. And no, one's a one's. Oh God, I can't even think. My mind's gone. This is when I know I've been on too long because my mind just goes blank. Um, yeah, I've got a real. I'm really looking forward to one of them. I'm not going to give you any details of that, but that's going to be in early May, and I don't know how it's going to go because it's. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I think. I think. And then there's another one that's just going to be really interesting. I've, I don't know the lady. I just know what she's created. So I don't know how that's going to go at all, but what she created is absolutely fantastic, and that'll be nearer the summer, I think. Um, so that's what's in the pipeline. And also, I've, um, I keep forgetting to contact her, but I'm supposed to have Karen Hooley on. Um, so I need to contact Karen and uh, ask her if she's still interested in coming on, because we were going to do it before Christmas, and then with Christmas happening and then other things that have happened, it's kind of just been put on the sideline. And I know she's been busy with other stuff. She's a very, very busy lady. She's a crocheter and a knitter. Unlike Tabitha, who's just a knitter. You have it all. Just a knitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right. So, th everybody, thank you for watching. Um, and uh, we will see you soon. And as always, all of you and Tabitha are blocked.